wonder of wonders, amazing amazement, glorious glory, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You the hands that made me, blood that redeemed me, one who made all things new. Oh, thank you, Lord. Were you the showers of blessings? Lord, Lord put upon me early in the latter rain. You're the wonder of wonders, the amazing amazement, the glorious glory of God. You're the hands that made me, the blood that redeemed me, the one who made all things new. You're the showers of blessings Love poured upon me Early in the latter Well, you're the wonder of wonder The amazing amazement The glorious glory of God You're the hands that made me You're the blood that redeemed me the one who made all things new. Through the showers of blessing, God put upon me early in the light. And I'm in awe of you, oh, forever, Lord. I in amazement the glorious glory oh God you're the hands that made me the blood that redeemed me the one who made all things new you're the showers of blessing love poured upon me early and alive Jesus, you're the Lord Almighty. Oh, Jesus, you're the name of our own name. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you're the King of glory. Jesus, you're the Lord. You're the name of love every day. And we worship. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. Jesus, you're the 
that God proclaimed. Everything he proclaimed, everything that he spoke, for well, I'm free to be everything that God proclaimed I am. For who the sun sets free, well, for who the sun sets free, is free indeed. Oh, who the sun sets free. That God proclaimed I am. Oh, free to be everything that God proclaimed I am. You're the King of glory, Jesus, you're the Lord Almighty, Jesus, you're the name above every name. Oh, Jesus, you're the King of glory, Jesus, you're the Lord Almighty. Jesus, you're the name above every name. You're the King of glory, Jesus, you're the Lord Almighty, Jesus, you're the name above every name. Jesus, you're the King of glory, Jesus. You're the Lord Almighty, Jesus, you're the name above every name. Oh, and never as it was known or understood, or oh, how he who possesses all faith could make it aside in its shape. Oh, what love! It never has it been known or understood how you possess this old thing. Could lay it aside in exchange for me and you? Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Redeemer, be exalted. Did I that all men might be drawn near unto you? Oh, Lamb of God, Redeemer, be exalted, lifted high, that all men might be drawn near unto you.
lifted high that all men might be drawn near unto you pray it with me one more time pray with me one more time Lamb of God Redeemer be exalted lifted high that all men might be drawn here unto you. Time. Lamb of God, Redeemer, be exalted, lifted high, that all men might be drawn here unto love, immeasurable love, this love of God. Oh, the love, immeasurable love, oh, this love of God. Unsearchable riches, unsearchable love, Riches of your mercy, the riches of your glory, the riches of your grace, oh God, we praise you in this place, oh Lord. All the unsearchable riches, all oh, the unsearchable riches of your love. Oh, hey. 
Embrace the cross, count all else is lost, for I'm crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, and I embrace the cross, and count all else is lost, for I'm crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me.
Something I think that the, I think one of the greatest things about walking with, about being redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and being born again, filled with the Spirit, is the freedom that we have to walk in His love. The freedom that we have to be outgoing, to where we're not encumbered by what people think. You know, I watch so many people; they're they're shrouded by intimidation. It's called introvertedness. They're shrouded by a self-consciousness that doesn't allow them to be free. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that today you'll come into this glorious freedom. We're going to minister to you for the purpose of you coming into this glorious freedom. You know, I, I had an open vision at the first of, of the singing today, and I watched as a person was receiving the gold medal. And I, and I heard in my spirit, Father's gave us a gold medal for this week. No, it's true. I, I mean, I don't tell these things unless you've been around me. You've been around me long enough. I, I hope that you understand. I don't, I'm not into, I'm not into pumping people up and filling them a bunch of stuff so that they'll come back or whatever. You know, I'll tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you if it's wrong, I'm going to tell you wrong. By the Spirit of the Lord. It's not going to be my own preference. I'm going to see. See, God shows us and we receive from heaven right out of a realm to where we can speak. No man has anything that's received from heaven. So many people trying to do things that they've not received from heaven. No man has any, no one has any authority unless God gives it to us. The Lord Jesus always spoke from the framework of he's saying, listen, as I see, so I'm speaking. As, I've, as it's been revealed to me, as it's been unveiled to me, so I declare. And that's what we're doing. You know, I watched this, I watched this alley just in the freedom of the Holy Ghost that she has. You know, without hesitation, walk over, hug a little girl that stood by the door. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, as soon as she hugged her, that, that, that young girl's life would be changed forever. Just by one hug. And by what I know that, I know what Allie was doing. Because she was speaking out of a way of no fear, no intimidation. All of those things get in the way of the communication of the Holy Spirit. And if we'll recognize it, then what will happen is we'll quit being ashamed of ourselves and feeling bad about ourselves. And we'll go to a place of prayer till we get broken free. I mean, God has given to us a freedom that is so immense and so lovely and so glorious that it, it, it is only seen and viewed in who He is. And somehow we, we fail to realize that. So we never step into it. We allow the things of this world, the cares of this life, worldliness, literally. You know, Paul is addressing the church at, at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and he's telling them, because of your worldliness. And you, you could say, well, oh, well the word... More, more is it more addressing carnality the reality of it is if you spend a little bit more time and you grow up a little bit more in understanding what Paul is saying he's literally saying your attachment to the world your worldliness has caused you to be all you know in strife and division everybody's got this idea and everybody and the other folks got this idea and this revelation that revelation some of you say I'm of Paul others of a Paul so he's just like you know you just don't even get it you're still being bound or influence I refuse to be bound I refuse to be bound by fear and intimidation. I refuse to be bound by unforgiveness. I refuse. When God has done so much for us. Amen. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm addressing those who are here right now with us. I'm addressing those that are watching all over the world. I'm addressing those that, that love us, that are in ministry together with us, that are watching right now, and that are also going to be watching later today or tomorrow, watching the YouTube. Praise God for the technology of the Internet. It's to be used only for the gospel. And I pray that... You'll allow it to be sanctified for that purpose in your life. But I'm going to tell you right now, we're on a, an assignment, and, and God has given us an amazing team. And because everybody, everybody here that is a part of this ministry is so dedicated to this cause, we're going to march through the land, through every zip code. We're, tre we're treating it just like we would treat Kashmir, Nepal, any other nation, and recognizing that, you know, wherever we go, that property belongs to God and to His Christ. We proclaim it. We claim it for the kingdom of God and His Christ. And if you don't understand it, I mean, I just feel so right in the elementary school because the elementary school is where children are being indoctrinated. 
into the most wild, crazy things. And not only has California basically, and they call it advancement, they call it freedom, allowed every wicked thing to be taught within the framework of the school, but now actually demanding people to call evil good and good evil. The, the elementary school now, the, I don't know if you understand this new bill that is before um, our legislator and legislative body in California, but it's actually being advanced by the legislative body that that is that not even will a, ch a, a, a teacher be allowed to correct a child, to tell them to be quiet in the classroom, to give any kind of reprimanding at all. And especially if there is some kind, there's other overtones, I'm not going to go into them because I don't want to be bogged down by that, but I'm just saying things aren't getting better, they're getting worse. So I'm salt and you're salt. We're light. You listen, you know what? Edu the world was basically in darkness with respect to education and ignorance until the church of the Lord Jesus Christ made it put upon themselves as a mission to go teach everybody how to read so that they could have the gospel explained to them. And it's gone so, it is, that has taken a turn and gone back into the realms of darkness with that education or that light. And Father wants us to bring the light of life. And we're going to. This, you know, this, this school will never be the same. This, this assembly hall will never be the same. I mean, this is better than going and praying over every classroom. Can you understand that? Is it, and, and we're not going to let up. We're not going to let up. Father is going to give us more and more help. And the, and the company of God's saints will grow as we go forth throughout the San Diego region. Through every zip code. And we watch what God alone can do. We're on uh, uh, the Magnificent Avenue right now. Amen. So we're getting started right off on the Magnificent Avenue. And um, we're going to watch Father do this amazing, miraculous thing that you might think is just busy work. You might think it's just happenstance, circumstance, because you've been indoctrinated by the world. You've been indoctrinated by human philosophy and psychology and ideologies. But literally, God in His love and faithfulness has committed to us to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, it's not us even making the decision. It's just Him doing it. Him opening the door. Praise God. You know, I have people that are around us that are so committed. People like Amy and, and Leslie and others, the team that have helped to break open the opportunities for different schools. But you know what? They're just, they're just basically in a position where God can say something through them and do something through them. You know... Huh. Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. He's absolutely far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. He is everything that the Bible says he is, but no one can see it, no one can know it, and it will not be revealed unless there's somebody in the earth that's willing to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. His glory, His majesty, who He is, is only going to be made known through people surrendered to the Holy Spirit. And you know what? That's my job. My job is to get people out of their human, humanized realm their worldly influences, their self-made images and ideologies. And that's not easy. That's the big block. Over into a realm of glorious freedom in the Holy Ghost. And it's an entirely different realm, a shift from the earthly to the heavenly. You can say it a million times, but unless, unless, the Spirit, unless you let the Spirit of God show you, you can't get it. Because the natural man, and the Lord comforted me over and again, and it's a terrible comfort. But he's comforted me like this and says, stop, don't, don't, don't try to press it so hard. The natural man cannot receive the things of God. You stay with it, you proclaim, until suddenly there's a change. And the spirit man rises up. And there's truly transformation. I know about the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Praise God for the first time you called upon the name of Jesus and said, Lord, I'm sorry. But oh, praise God for his goodness that leads you to repentance, which is change. Where no longer do you live your own life. And then, people, I want you to understand. You run the risk of being stuck within a framework of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 calls worldliness babes. Babes. It's like it's the first moment of birth. Literally, the concept in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is people are stuck and living in the first moments of birth. And fathers earnestly desiring that there be young men raised up, mighty men. Hallelujah. And I believe that's happening. I believe that's happening in many of your lives. And some of you with total abandonment. I mean, what God's going to do with our new mission training, or our new mission uh, center and headquarters up in Campo. I promise you it is going to be huge for the next 200 years. Or until Jesus comes. 
And some of you went and you busted your piggy bank because that's all you had for savings. Some of you went and took out finances out of your home. Some of you took and went, went and, and pulled out everything you had in, in the 401k and other case. And <laughs> I promise you that's a gold medal. I promise you that's, you're not losing nothing. Now the Lord Jesus tells us, look, you've got to forsake everything. Because if I try to give you what I want to give you in the context of what you have, it will ruin you. But you're going to have to have a radical change where everything is left behind. You will get rid of everything. I mean, look at Jeremy and, and, and Julie and the kids. They set up. Those kids, the, the, the three right there, the four right there. Amen. You just, take, you, just do what, you just do what the Lord says in his word to do. You watch what your kids are going to do. Watch what your children are going to be. Get, we're getting ready to send Jeremy and Julie out again. Praise God. They're going for some more advanced training. See what you leave on the May, May 15th. Is it the 15th? May 13th. May 13th. And they're going to be a great blessing to, to the church in Oregon. What God's doing in Oregon is amazing. Our sacrifice is their blessing. And they're, going to get, they're going to be involved in a lot of the things that are happening right now. And we're seeing that area broken open by the power of God. We're seeing Father put together a, an amazing team there. But we'll, we'll just watch what God's going to do. We're, we're not going to let up. And, you know, sometimes maybe things might get hard or the inconvenient for you. But if you get past your heart and inconvenience, you're going to discover something glorious and miraculous. Amen. A life of days of heaven upon the earth. Yes. A life of walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. A life, a life of living by the Spirit. A life of signs and wonders and miracles. Praise God for every one of you here. We're just so blessed to have such an amazing team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. The body of Christ is an amazing and wonderful and glorious thing. And as you come into this place and as we go to these different schools over the next, I don't know, if we just do it by ourselves, it would be the next 10 years. So get ready. Somebody says, where's church next? We'll give you a month warning. <laughs> or at least a couple of weeks, if not a month, we'll let you know. But it's going to be fun. We're just going to we're going to take on this region as as nations, and and I want you to move in the faith of it. You know, we were seven years, eight years vested into Kashmir before we all of a sudden begin to see the breakthrough in Kashmir, and that thing is just going to increase. How many of you going to Kashmir in July? Would you raise your hands? Praise God for everybody that's going to Kashmir in July. There's only five people in here that are going. Is it just five? Because it's a, actually the team is actually bigger because there's people six, seven. There's actually a lot of folks coming up out of Kandagar and maybe even Nagiland. You can be seated. Nagiland's a radical. Nagiland's a radical part of India. Hallelujah. We get ready to set up out at the out at, at our mission uh, at the mission center headquarters in Oregon. We're getting ready to start flying all the flags. Probably most significant, it's probably the most significant business community of Azerbaijan. It was reaching out to me again yesterday. Wow. Now we watched as, as that unfolded because I've been crying out for Azerbaijan for many years now. Asking the Lord, how do we break into Azerbaijan? Yeah. Because Azerbaijan just now beginning to understand its freedom. And it's a bastion of freedom for that area. It's just beginning to understand its freedom. It's been under the stronghold of communism. There's been a lot of great things happen there. You know, that's where... That's where the Nobel Peace Prize was born, in Baku, Azerbaijan. And so many other things. It's the gateway to the middle, it's the gateway to Asia. It's Middle Asia, the gateway to the East, rather. And so much of the history, you know, of Azerbaijan is wrapped up within the culture of change, within all of, of, of the world, you know, sociology. Noah's Ark landed right near that spot. Plus, it's, an, it's, a, it's a place where we begin to have a beachhead for Armenia and a beachhead for Georgia. And I said, Lord, you know, Father, there's not a lot of people who, who have move in faith for finances to do these things. How are we going to do them? And then the Lord spoke, spoke to me and said, will you move in faith? Will you count it all off? You know, there's been many people who, who started, but they didn't end well in ministry and also in business and finances. They started well. They started giving. They started putting Father first.
But then as they had increase and it began to multiply into the millions, into the hundreds of millions, suddenly God became back burner because they started running with fame and with fortune and it changed their whole purpose and identity. And they thought, you know, I was giving God, you know, it's one thing to give God a million. It's another thing to give God a hundred million. How, who can I give, who can, they can't be trusted with it. They don't know what they're doing with it. So you can become high-minded. That's what happens to people. And so what I know Father is doing right now in these days is he's raising up people who live as though they have nothing. You know, I was reading this morning, Paul describes his life is not looking like favor. He said, I don't have a house to live in. I don't even have proper clothes to wear. My shoes are worn out on my feet. I'm going to tell you right now, he breaks it down like that. He said, we are persecuted. We are abandoned. We are cast out. But basically saying, but we got Jesus. And I'm thinking, well, you know, there doesn't seem like a lot of favor there. Hey, there was a lot of favor there. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Well, look at the bigger story. Look at the bigger view. Because people get lost in the moment of their problems and trials, and they can't see what we called to be and called to do. And Father's, getting, Father's already opened a door to Azerbaijan. And we're already starting to feel, we're already starting to move into that realm. Amen. And I'm not going to slow down. People sit around and calculate. You can't calculate God. You can't put God in your math book, in your history book, in your science book, in your personal book. God's bigger. Amen. God's almighty. Amen. He's just looking for somebody. I mean, look at, you know, if you look at anybody. I just take Reinhard Bonnke because I think he's a great example of amazing things. If, if somebody would have said that Reinhard Bonnke was going to do the things that he did over the past 20 years, everybody would have said no, or 30 years. Everybody said it's impossible. It's impossible to have a crowd of a million people. Are you kidding me? Where are you going to even do that? From a practical point of view. Little did they know that farmers were willing to sacrifice a crop. And at big co-ops would sacrifice all of their crop so that Reinhard Bonnke could have a, a meeting that could contain 800,000 to a million people. <laughs> Pete, we, wanted, we just want you today, we want you to just get lost in the glory of his presence. We want you to understand that the Word of God and what God says in His Word is not a fairy tale. And though it may seem far from you right now, that you can break through into that realm. Here, here's the beautiful thing of it is. All of heaven, God has opened up the door for all of us to step in. It doesn't mean everybody's going to step in because the fact, the fact of it is people don't step in. That's why I know. That's why Jesus said agonize to enter into this realm. Because He understood all the things that we would be up against and the propensity of men to be so exceedingly selfish. There is nothing that describes deny yourself more than for you to cease to be selfish, self-centered, making decisions based upon how it works out for you. And I'm not going to go into that this morning. But it's the truth. I would love to be able to break these simple things down for folks that, just, that they allow in their life. And God has given us power to overcome every one of them. Father has given us power and divine ability to break through every hindrance of darkness. Not only the self-interest, the things that have jaded us, the things that have messed us up and made. Talk about dysfunctional. Compare you to what God created you to be. Are you listening to me? Compare you right now to what Papa created. Compare me. If you don't like you, just compare me to what God purposed me to be when he created me in Christ Jesus, and I can only begin to understand that first and foremost when he, God shaped Adam in his own image and likeness, and then Jesus comes and fully reveals what that's supposed to look like. Talk about messed up, dysfunctional. Then if we can see it, then we go, oh God, I don't want to live bound like this anymore. Amen. And then the Lord starts showing us, wait, you're bound because you're believing a lie. You're bound because you're believing your ideas. You're bound because you're believing the ideas of men and the culture that has imposed itself upon you. I love the United States of America. I love the freedoms of the United States of America, but the United States of America propagates bondage educationally, politically, sociologically. It's not the kingdom of God, people. Are you kidding me? I don't think we need to do too much convincing on that point. <laughs> Are you with me? Then why are we so influenced by it? Father has given us an opportunity that the church has rarely had and in fact never had on the scale that we have right now. Never has, been, has it been 
afforded the church such prosperity as there has been. I'm talking about the church. I'm not talking about some social organization. I'm talking about the church baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the church filled with the purposes of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the abandonment of Jesus, with the abandonment of the Apostle Paul, with the abandonment of Peter, with the abandonment of everyone who lives on throughout the ages in our history books now and throughout eternity in the book of Acts with their total consecration and abandonment to the gospel. Never in a time in the history of the church have we had the privilege to prosper so much. To lay hold on wealth, to do things with it like changing Azerbaijan, to, to sit with the peoples of government. Amen. The most influential peoples of government right now in Azerbaijan are the agricultural folks. Because they need a, it's the basis for an economy. Yeah. What you raise and what you grow. They're trying to build an economy. I walked in there one day and I said, guys, I, I ended up, Ann and I were there meeting with a pastor who's basically influential, Pastor Alex, who's influential throughout all the stands, throughout all the former Soviet Union. A great man of God raised in communism. Mama, a communist teacher in high school, got set free by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power that is in the name of Jesus. And Father just raised him up to greatness. I was there meeting with him, and, and what happened was immediately I arrived, the Lord showed me and, and presented to me that the World Food Organization, the World Food Organization was having a huge conference, and I was to go. I was way past the deadline of registration, but I got registered. Hmm, how's that work out? Not only did I get registered, but I got, I got a prestigious VIP type of registration. As a representative of the United States of America, I was the only one <laughs> from the USA. Praise God. I wanted to go there for that. That's just the way, you know, that's just the way the Lord does stuff. And I, I, walked up, I walked up to one person. I was telling them, listen, I got a way to change the, the way that you do the cattle business here in Azerbaijan. And they, and they like, look at me, kind of like, you know, question mark in one eye, exclamation mark in the other. You know, just like, oh, what? He says, wait a minute. So he goes, gets a vet. Finds, a, finds their leading veterinarian. I said about one paragraph to the veterinarian, and he said, what? And then I said about another two paragraphs, and he goes, wait a minute. He goes, get, and, he goes and gets like the, the governmental head of agriculture, the person who's head over all agriculture for the nation. About three other vets and about a dozen people who were on the ground doing the work. They sat around a table and listened to me asking questions for well over an hour, almost into two hours. And we've already begun. We've already begun. They're already starting to see the impact of, of what we gave them out of the wisdom of the Lord. Some of the things that I said, I didn't even know what I was talking about. No, I, where's Daniel? He's not here. My wife's not here. Daniel and some man, my wife was with me and... I was talking to a person I know is going to be influential in the kingdom of God in the near future. She's from China. And I started telling her things about what she was doing in, in the CNS sciences, central nervous system sciences, that she's going, how do you know this stuff? I mean, she's got an MD, a PhD, and I'm giving her by the word of knowledge insight in the things that she's working on in molecular biology. And their outcomes. And she's like, and then it just so happened that a friend of mine had downloaded a bunch of stuff to me on, um, on various, you know, um, diseases that are central nervous system diseases. And it just so happened, I hit my computer and it popped up, the clinical trials. She looks over and she goes, what? Where did you get that information? I put my hand over it. I said, this has got to be sworn to secrecy. And the reality of it is, I'm telling, and that's just what happens. People want to ride on their ends like, how smart are you? You know, you know how, many, well, how many degrees do you have? No, I know God the Holy Ghost. Are you kidding me? I know the smartest person in the universe. Are you kidding me? Somebody said, are you a mind reader? No, I'm a Holy Ghost talker. I'm a Holy Ghost talker. I mean, she turned to Ann and she turned to Joshua and, I mean, Daniel Simmons said, this is the smartest person I've ever met in my life. I said, I promise you, I'm not that smart, but I want to tell you about the one who lives on the inside of me who is. No, it's just true. You get over in this realm. You get where God wants to use you. Listen, if you where God ain't gonna, doesn't want to use you, you ain't going to be able to do nothing. 
If you're sitting at home on, you know, basically reading your Bible and praying, huh, and have no intent, and do, in, intent on doing what he is saying, you ain't getting nothing. You're not going to grow. Even what will happen is you'll run the risk of being a strife maker. You'll make strife. You'll make division. You'll cause division and strife. Those two things are things that will ruin Pentecost in your life and in the church. So we want them out of your life. I want them out of your life. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be all over you for your blessing, Amen. for your good. Huh? Amen. You know, it, it's just, it's caring. It's being a shepherd. It's caring. As a shepherd, if I see a sick animal, I'm going to take care of it. I'll just don't, I'll just pray it's going to be better. I'm going to get up inside you, man. Amen. We're going to find out what's, what's going on. There some, might be some pathology we can fill out here. Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, people. people. I don't want you getting that close to me. <laughs> Brad and I were, I was out helping Brad understand how close you're supposed to get to the sheep. And I had my arm in about up to here. And uh, that's too personal. Well, spiritually speaking. And a very successful rancher who's, you know, in business, very, very successful. I don't put dollar value on or anything. He, he walks up and he goes, are you the vet? I said, no. He said, are you the pastor? I mean, you my kind of pastor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the way it's supposed to work. We're supposed to be in, involved in personal lives, in your lives. God ordained it. God ordained various different relationships, your relationships that you have at home with your parents. You better make sure those relationships are right and, they, and that if Satan's got in the midst of it, you break that yoke in the name of Jesus so things can get right. And maybe you can't ever have the kind of relationship with your parents or, you know, friends that you, close family members that you want to have, but you can let them know that you love them. You can let God fill your heart with love for them. You can have mercy and forgiveness for them. You can have patience and long suffering for them. Are you with me? Yes. Because you got to show it your household first. If you bound there, you can never be free in the church. Because then you start showing it in the framework of the church, your relationship with one another and how Jesus modeled it and described it. It's not tolerance, people. If you're tolerating folks, you've got a serious deficiency of love. And I mean, and just imagine if God tolerates you for eternity. God's going to tolerate Yeah, they hear, but my goodness. <laughs> you wouldn't want that. Yeah, I'll let them in the kingdom of them. Act like you don't notice. No way. No way. But whatever measure we measure, it's going to come back to us. And I want to talk to you today about the difference between $10 million, $10 million and $10,000. Okay, I want to talk to you about a story that Jesus told about $10 million, a $10 million debt versus $10,000. First, when I first started understanding this story in Matthew chapter 18, I wonder why the Lord played that, placed that much value on us and on our personal issues. Lord, why wasn't it worth it? Why wasn't it in comparison to your love and mercy and forgiveness 10 cents? Because that's pushing it. Why wasn't it just a penny? Because the Lord knows how difficult it is for us. He knows how difficult it is for us to stop being selfish. He knows how difficult it is to lay down our life and, become, and be willing to have the mind of the Spirit. You know, I don't go around and find people want to be trained folks in, in word of knowledge and word of wisdom and discerning of spirits, but yet they're not willing to train people in the mind of Christ, in the mind of the Spirit that gets those words of knowledge and those words of wisdom and discerning of spirit. And discerning of spirits is so important. Sutaki Adaboshika. Discerning of spirits is so very, very important. Hallelujah. Guys, I want you to just, that's beautiful, and I want you to just come and then. You can help out with the children and everything. Just, I want you to just be able to listen. Because I believe this will change. I believe what I'm telling you will absolutely change your life if you don't get offended. Amen. If you get offended, it ain't going to change you. It ain't going to change you. Every time Jesus ministered and people got offended, they left us the same. Every time Jesus ministered, and sometimes he ministered with the greatest level of reason to take offense. Somebody said, oh, if you were a perfect man, you'd walk in wisdom and nobody would take offense. You're missing the point. Are you, are you listening to me? Yeah. Um, you're walking in the scripture, you'd be accepting everybody as they are. No, I wouldn't either, because then we wouldn't have any correction in the order, because I'm going to tell you right now, God wants us to deal with problems. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't easy to be dad in the house. 
Huh? Especially when people are older than you. Are you with me? And it's especially difficult when you, your dad in the house and you're only 30 years old. They're, you know, got a bunch of other people, you know, they in their, you know, 50, 60. Don't tell me, sonny boy. Because once again, they're not recognizing the anointing. They're just human to human. Don't tell me I made better grades than you or whatever. You know, it's just crazy stuff. There so many young pastors, especially anointed Holy Ghost pastors, have to face. I face some of the stuff too. But you know what? Nonetheless, we continue on. And right now, we just, we right at the beginning of a great move of the Spirit of God. This will end in Qualcomm Stadium. Amen. This will end in people having the great display of the love of God and the mercy of God being revealed to them, as well as the power of God, hallelujah, and the glory of God. And I, I believe that there's some of you in this place, and I pray it would be all of you. Make a 10-year goal starting the day. That by the next 10 years, you come and come into the fullness of the measure, Amen. the maturity of the ministry of Jesus, and the fully Amen. matured man. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you so set a heart, your heart to that, and you begin to pray that way, and you begin to walk with God in the way that he has instructed, then you're going to begin to have radical Radical increase and radical growth in your life. You won't be the same. I think the worst, I think that you want, if you want to insult me the worst, the worst way you can insult me is say, oh, you didn't, you're the same as you've always been. You haven't changed a bit. I can't, no, I don't know of any worse insult. You couldn't, you couldn't say a more t terrible thing to me. If you called me a frog or whatever, you know, I had, you had the intellect of a frog. I mean, whatever, you know, there's nothing that could be more insultive than to say you've not changed a bit. You're just the same. No, 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 no. I'm so blessed, you know, when I'm standing in front of people, I was not too long ago, a person trying to tell me that they knew who I was and they remember me because they hadn't seen me since I was like 18 years old. I tell you, that wasn't something you wanted to see, okay? <laughs> I was anti-culture, anti-everything, and it was crazy, man. I was demon-possessed. Praise God for deliverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I said, no, no, no. I said, I, I said, you don't know me. That's not who I am. She said, I know I can see that. And that was, I thought, well, that's probably the best compliment anybody could give me. No, I know I could see that. And it wasn't because I didn't have, you know, it wasn't about the long hair and all the other radical stuff. It was just simply about this glory of the presence of Jesus. And this, there's a light that the world is wanting, waiting to see, and it's the light of love. And, it's, and, and people are always looking to see, is this real? Is it true? Or is this just another, you know, you know pretend? Is this just another show? It's just, just another show. And they're going to watch how you're treating one another. They're going to watch how you truly, genuinely love one another. You're going to watch how you accept one another. And I'm going to talk to you about this acceptance. I'm talking about bearing one another, uh, bearing with one another's burdens and issues in this love. I'm talking about you becoming outgoing. I'm talking about you loving one another like Jesus Christ loves us, like loved you. I mean, that, that's barring n n nothing. I mean, you talk about giving your life. You talk about laying down your life. There's no one that can describe that on the level that Jesus described it. I want you to hear it. I want you to know there's not a greater demonstration of the power of the Spirit of the living God than this. And if you start doing it, what you're going to find out is all that other stuff is just going to be absent. All the sin, all the problems, all your issues will just go away. Why? Because their whole life, my life is filled with the light of Jesus. And when your life is filled with the light of Jesus, the darkness is gone. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray, I pray that you'll recognize that the authority of God's word will produce within you the outworking of his power. The authority of his word will fill you with faith to be able to stand up against all this stuff that comes at you that wants to jade you and make you something different than the image and person of Jesus Christ. We're so blessed, we're so honored that Almighty God lives and dwells here. I'm so honored and so blessed that I get to participate in seeing you come into the greatness that God has purposed for you. But, you know, I was at it. I was as strong at it as 1986. I was going at it as hard as I could. And my mother looks at me and says, son, you just need to well, stop. You can lead a horse to water, but you're trying to make him drink. You got him by, the, you got him by right, your arm around the neck and you're saying, drink. I said, drink. And he gonna, <laughs> you can, can't do that. You just got to leave it. I said, mom, I don't want to leave it. Are you kidding me? I want to get on with this program. Father's got time to put his program together. I praise God for everybody who's sitting here. I praise God that you get to be a model of God's long suffering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
And I, well, I pray, God, that you are not only going to be a model of God's long suffering, but that you also get to be a model of what ultimately that long suffering results in. Amen. Something so glorious, something so amazing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to open up your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 18. And, you know, as we're getting into this, I just want to remind you guys, listen, we met our first goal for the... Uh, for, our, for the new ba world mission base. And uh, wow, it was just a miracle, you know, to go from nothing about three weeks ago to having over $200,000 in the account because of the sacrifice of the folks that are in this place. And we're going, we're going for now about another 280. And a significant amount of that is already designated for that. And so... Let's just keep it, just, I mean, you know, be as, let's just say that, you know, you're passionate about giving, but you don't have anything, okay? Well, would you please be as passionate about giving and through your prayer as you were, would be, if you had and you saved and you worked dog hard and you plowed and you did everything you could to save like $50,000 and it took you like, you know, 40 years and now you're going to give that. That'd be pretty passionate. Are you with me? It took all of the scraping and saving and cutting, you know, cost and budgeting to get there. And now you're going to give. That's passionate, man. I mean, you tell me that that doesn't touch Papa's heart. You tell me that Father isn't going to do something with that. Are you kidding me? You can't possibly believe in God. If you think that somehow he's going to look at that and just ignore it and say, ah, no big deal. I'm, no, 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 no. Even our earnest prayers, even our earnest requests, like a child saying, Papa, I got a bobo, please heal it. He's touched by that. He's touched by every part of our life. I mean, I'm never known, by, I'm, I'm never known anyone, including myself, so in love with me that they're going to count my hair loss. Are you with me? I didn't count my hair loss this morning. Other than, you know, I am a little bit, you know, grieved by the fact that my, my scalp, you know, is becoming more and more bare with the years. And I have a rescinding hairline. So I count it on that scale. You know, and it kind of grieves me. But the Lord, is a, he's touched. Are you with me? Understand what I'm saying? He, like, counts the hair upon our head. He loves us that much. How, I mean, there's no way, I don't know if there's any way to describe his love for us more than what he did at, the, at his expense to come and redeem us. So people, just I, can, can we just begin to let God, the Holy Ghost, fill us with his love? Because you can't have it naturally. You can't have it pretend. You can't have it religiously. You're not going to love like Jesus. No, you're not. Not until you get full of the Holy Ghost. Not until you've been born again. Amen. Amen. Not until you rely upon the Holy Ghost because you're going to just, just be just like the rest of the folks. And, you know, and man lost in a, in a place of darkness and bondage. And today, in the name of Jesus... You're going to come out of that. Now, listen, I'm going to set a tone here because we're going to talk tonight. We're going to try to let God, the Holy Ghost, move us over into the realms of Pentecost tonight. Amen. And so I'm going to just set the stage. You open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. Yes. I just kind of want to set the stage here with a verse of Scripture that's going to kind of encapsulate what we're talking about this morning and what I believe God, the Holy Ghost, is going to talk to us about tonight. And remember, this isn't just a talking to. This isn't just a lecture like you get for education because you now know more. Probably never can do anything with it. Are you with me? Yes. There's a lot of things you learn in school. You can't ever do anything with it. You know the smartest people in the school are those folks that are going, why am I learning this? I can't ever do anything with it. Those are actually the smartest people. You thought they were the dumbest people. They're actually the smartest people. They had more insight than anybody else. Why am I even learning this? I have no intention on ever doing anything with this. Are you kidding me? Are you listening to me? So today, understand that this isn't for information only. This isn't for intellectual stimulus. This is for the empowerment of divine grace to work in our lives to bring us into freedom, into a freedom, a freedom that was paid for us in full, a freedom that was fully granted to us. I can't help it that we go constantly back to ourselves, shut ourselves in, and lock the door. And then I, praise God for a pastor, comes with a key. He's got a master key. Master, he's got the master's key. Unlocks the door, throws it up, and says, come on out. Huh? And then, like, you know, finally at the end of the meeting, people start to just kind of come out the prison just a little bit, a little bit. Woo! Good. Um, and then they're back in by Monday afternoon. And then by, by Tuesday, they're so insecure with that door unlocked, they go ahead and lock themselves back in. <laughs> Praise God for the master key. And right now, right now, we don't have a Wednesday night service. We're going to see that change. We don't have a Wednesday night service except for the last of the month. But the reality of it is, I believe that what happened in the streets you know, the past couple of days is bigger than that. And I know that people need to be brought to that, but just listen, grab hold of somebody, 
over the next couple of months and watch what God will do in your life as you go everywhere preaching the gospel. As you go everywhere with this fire of the Holy Ghost, counting it an honor to be identified with God Almighty in the midst of a perverse and crooked world, to be counted worthy, to be so, to know Him so well, to, so, to truly have a relationship with Him on a level, to wear that, you count it an honor to suffer for His name's sake. If you, if you don't know Him, it ain't going to be no honor. All you're going to be thinking about is, man, I got trashed today. I got rejected. It was bad in every way. Okay, so, <laughs> Father, touch the babies in Jesus' name. Let the restlessness cease and the peace come in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 15. Hold your, hold your Bibles open to Matthew chapter 18. I'm coming to you. But I want to read this verse of Scripture to you. Matthew chapter 15. Uh, re, forgive me. Romans chapter 15. Verse, starting at verse 5. Now the God of patience. And I'm going to tell you right now, if I dug into the context, we could un, uh, underscore that and understand it in the context of which Paul was talking and addressing, but we should be able to understand it right now. Praise God, he is the God of patience. He is the God of long-suffering, not willing that anyone perish, but everyone come into this life. And it's not just because you say Jesus, and it's not because you do your little church thing. It's because you come into the life of God and you're willing to live the life of God. You're willing to say no to the life of worldliness, the life of this, of, of this world and the prince of the power of the air. And people have said, said so in certain categories. Well, I'm not having adultery. I'm not having, you know, fornication. I'm not having uncleanness. I'm not having lasciviousness, which would be huge in this modern day. I'm not having witchcraft, but are you having strife? Are you basically bound by fear and intimidation? Are you living the life? What part of sin and darkness and the ways of, of the realms of the demonic are acceptable to you? And the reality of it is when all of a sudden, no, 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 you've seen him and you go, wow, I want that kind of freedom, that kind of love where I'm not living under intimidation anymore, where I can actually be the adult in the room. People talk about an adult in the room. They've never been an adult in their life. Are you with me? I hear these people, these newscasters talking about it. Let's sit in their little high and mighty seat talking about somebody being an adult in the room. Are, are you it? Are you kidding me? No, but the person who's full of the love and the lowliness and the meekness. And I'm going to talk to you about this wonderful realm of meekness. This wonderful realm of meekness that absolutely suffers injury and thinks no, has no thought of it. Who's persecuted, but it doesn't bother them. Huh? Meekness to find meekness wasn't a big thing for the Greeks. Okay, and one of the ways it was anciently defined is like the perfect discipline of a well-trained dog. I want to be to have the perfect discipline of a well-trained dog to father to the Holy Ghost, and better than that. Okay, and that's the best way they can describe meekness: to be under the control, fully disciplined to everything that He wants. Ooh, man! I hope that excites you this morning. I hope I hope that suddenly somehow these values, these virtues, these things which literally are the expressions of love. You can say you have love, but if you don't walk in lowliness and gentleness and meekness, gentleness means that you are not going to defend yourself. When you have a right to stand up for your rights, you will not. You will abdicate. I will not stand up for my rights. I will only stand for the rights that belong to Jesus. And that's the way that the Lord used it over and again in the Scripture. If you want to say gentleness means that you're soft-handed, you're just always accommodating. And that's not true. Put that on Jesus. You're not going to find that in him. Any definitions that you have, you've got to put it on Jesus, see if it works. Huh, are you with me? It's just that simple. Praise God. I want to just call you to this glory. I want to call you to this virtue. I want to call you to this state that has totally yielded the Holy Spirit. I want to call you to this state where God can work abundance of blessings in your life, where Jesus can begin to be seen. Huh? Come on, people. Come on. Too many times, I mean, this is a terrible thing, but too many times people look like they basically are, you know, straining. They're sitting in a place straining. <laughs> they got a problem, stomach problems. Okay? Huh? And this is, the, this is the expression in church. Shouldn't it be? Huh? It should be freedom and liberty. And we got to get there in Jesus' name. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Come on now. I, I'm just trying to make some graphics for you. I'm not trying to make some, you know, good visuals for you, okay? Hallelujah. Uh, you don't have to unload yourself with something. Just yield all that he's freely given. All the problems will go. It's just that simple. Just that simple. 
Now, I'm going to read this to you. I'm going to try to read it. See, it's just what happens to me. I get to the first word and I can't go on. <laughs> now, the God of patience and comfort, great consolation. He's always comforting me. He's always telling me, come on now. You're going to get it. Come on now. Yeah, come on. I'm prayed for you. Come on now. You can stand. Come now. Endure. Come on now. Okay? Come on. Stand up. Quit acting like that. Grant you to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. God wants us to be... And with our attitude and our dispositions toward each person, he wants each of us to be functioning and acting and interacting with everybody around us just like Christ Jesus would. And just specifically, because so much is within the framework of selfishness, we have to say then, you know, because as Paul said, the infirmity of your flesh, just like you want everybody to treat you. Because it's hard for you to understand, many people understand, a place disconnected from themselves. Are you with me? Because the Lord hasn't called us to love one another as we love ourselves. That is a place that's confined to an old nature, has the glory of the law and the word of God, making known the goodness of God, but the empowerment's just not there. So now he takes it, he elevates it. Are you listening to me? Yes. He elevates it. And he says to, says to us this. He said, now I want you to love one another the same love that I've loved you. And people nod their head and they say, yeah, but then they, they act like God doesn't notice when they ain't even close to loving like Jesus loved. If I don't notice, wait a minute, am I, am I not dealing with this? Then my loins aren't girt about and I'm, my, my life's not burning. I'm playing games. I'm playing pretend. I'm playing make-believe. I'm playing comparison. Oh, I love more than that person over there does. But I don't love as much as they do, but I love more than them. I'm like second in line. Who cares? It's comparing yourself among yourself. It's like, where is this thing of really grabbing a hold of it? Intimacy and a relationship with the Lord with total abandonment. We give ourselves to the Holy Spirit so he can train us to be well-disciplined saints who are well-disciplined saints that obey every order and every command. Huh? It's frustrating. Man, especially if you've got... Let me just kind of talk to you from an agrarian point of view for just a moment. You've got a dog who's good at... Cattle, and he's getting distracted constantly with the squirrels. Wait a minute, man. We got bulls charging us. Where are you at? Get here now. I've got a dog. I got to constantly call him off back because he wants to take it. He wants to take it. He wants to eat the whole cow right there on the spot. We don't want you to eat the cow. We want you to move him forward. So there's always the balance. Huh? How, how responsive are you to God the Holy Ghost? How responsive do you want to be? How much heaven do you want? Well, then we say that, you know, self-gratification is like, I want all heaven. How much blessing do you want? Oh, I want all the blessings. Self-gratification. I want it all. But how much are you willing to give it all? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. As long as I don't have to do nothing. Huh? I want it all without any accountability and without any responsibility. But Father says that's not, that isn't the case. Are you listening to me? Come on, Come on now. Let's break through this thing in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Where we just begin to take everything of our life, submit it over to the Lord Jesus and let him fill it. Every part of us. To be conformed to the image isn't something you've got to strain to do. It's a place in a state of a yielded heart. Now, let me just, just walk you through Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 18. Oh, I didn't finish reading this. I'm going to finish reading this. I might not ever get to Matthew chapter 18, but... That you, may, that you may with one mind and with one mouth glorify God. I'm going to tell you something. Unless you're willing to do the first part of it, you can never do the second part of it. I'm going to lay out for you the rules and the orders of God about his divine love and what he's given in a changed heart that absolutely makes you ready for Pentecost and yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. It's a state which, which God can come. And it's proven over and again in the scripture. I'm going to show you. And without it, there is absolutely no way. The love of God, the three principal things in the love of God is lowliness, meekness, and, and forbearance or long-suffering. This is true. And the only way you're going to learn that is within relationship with one another. People said, I'm not going to bypass everybody. I'm going to ride to Jesus because he's all sport and loves me. I, don't, I, like, I like my dog better than human beings. you got a problem. You got a problem. I got people come and tell me, listen, please tell me, please tell me that the dogs live eternally and they're going to be in heaven. Well, I'm going to tell you what your real problem is. You're more attached to those dogs and the souls around you. Who offended you? Who hurt you? Who put you in that prison? Will you let me set you free? And they're going to justify their prison to me. They're going to justify their state. Look, people, 
Come on, folks. You know, remember, you remember in chemistry class? Some of you do, some of you like, I never had a chemistry class. You like, or maybe you and doing, you know, doing horticulture and you're trying to find a pH, right? And you know, you know the color it's supposed to be. You got this color chart, right? And it's supposed to be like this pale yellow and you pink. I promise you right now, you don't meet them. You don't match the image. You don't match the requirements. If you say, yeah, it's good. <laughs> that ain't gonna work out. <laughs> no, no, look. That ain't going to work out. Like, you can't ignore truth. You can't ignore the reality. The Word of God is the grid. The Word of God is a, is a pattern. It sets for us the mark. It shows for us what the fruits are supposed to look like. Our Father's looking for us to do is respond with truth. And say, I want that. He's look, look, He sees that. When it's there, it's going to happen. When it isn't there, you can say all the stuff you want to do with lip service ain't nothing going to change because God said, I don't see it in your heart yet. There, you, you, haven't, you haven't looked at the truth, gazed upon the beauty of it, and wanted it yet. Huh? Praise God. Look at little, look at little, look at little Shiloh. It's beautiful. He's sucking down that food. And we are so blessed with him on every scale. But we're expecting him to grow, okay? Because that's how God's ordained it. As newborn babes, the Lord loves us. And, and even as 50-year-old as, as babes, the Lord loves us because of this long suffering. But we, you know what? Every one of us love the beauty of people who are going to be spiritually mature. Why? Because you benefit from it. You benefit from that kind of love, that kind of freedom. It's time people rise up in this church and you become elders in the kingdom of God. Forget about being an elder in the church. Do you become leaders in the kingdom of God? Quit about being, forget about being a leader in the church. All of that is, is just somebody putting a little, you know, uh, badge on your lapel so you can feel better about your worst self. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Hallelujah. People, I'm going to tell you right now, there's freedom in this house. There's freedom because there's freedom in this message. There's revelation and light here. It says, I don't need to live sad another day. I don't need to live under fear another day. He said, I don't live under fear. Yes, you do. Live under fear and under torment if you haven't got the glorious liberty to flow in love without any kind of restriction and a consideration more for others than for yourself. You love on more people, people around you more than you love on yourself. That's Jesus. That's the model. That's what he's calling us to. No human being can do that. That is something that is supernatural. It belongs to the realms of the spirit. God's here to teach us. Come on, let's just do this. And you've got to learn it. And we've got to be patient with everybody while we're learning. Okay? I want to tell you that within the framework of what we're saying here in this particular verse of scripture, Paul's having to run, Paul's having to work in the ministry to, to bring Jews to a place where they accept Gentiles. Because they're like, what? I gotta sit next to a gent? No way. Are you with me? Come on, I've raised all my life that the Goyim are unclean. Man, I'm trying to get over here connected with God, and i got this demon sitting by me. <laughs> and Paul's saying, no, 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 uh-uh. It's, it's, it, look, guys, the Lord has taken all the uncleanness away. He say, he's, 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 he's removed all of the offense. There is no difference now between you Jews and you Gentiles. And on the other side, the Gentiles are going, man, the Jews, they're the worst people, you know, group of people on the face of the earth. You know, they're so high-minded. You know, they're the problem makers of all of our issues. Huh? They're the causes of all of our problems, put it that way. And now Paul saying, no, 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 listen to me. That you may be one mind. Who's he talking to? He's talking to Jews and Gentiles. He's talking to people who don't like each other. Are you with me? At least most of the people that walk in the door, you kind of like them. You're like, who's that? Huh? And then you know, you know, do the little, you know, the little timid thing, and you like, run over to your chair and shake there a little bit and act like it's all right. Oh, don't, don't, don't give me that stare. I'm breaking it down for you, man. I'm peeling the onion right now. Because I know Jesus, because I'm going to talk about Jesus' response. I'm going to talk about the holy response. I'm going to talk about what God does. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to talk on the basis of what you think life looks like and what you think proper behavior looks like. Uh, this isn't a behavioral science class. I'm not talking about the behavior, behavior of Almighty God, what that looks like. And that's the contrast and comparison. And he's invited us into that realm of glory. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. They may be with one mind. They might have one mind. A Jew have one mind with a Gentile? Are you kidding me? A Gentile have one mind with a Jew? Are you kidding me? 
Huh? Especially if a person comes walking in and they were in the priesthood. Watch out, guys. Like, mm. Are you with me? The, this is the, the priesthood, right? He's the leader. He's the guy that gets to go in there where nobody else gets to go in. And now he's on the back row. This ain't working out right. Can you hear me? Do you understand this gradation of issues that are going on and, and, and the ideas and the concepts that literally have men locked in bondage in the early church? And there was enough grace and there was enough ability to get people through that mess so that they could have all this wonderful display of the power of God that was there. People, we have far, more, we have far less issues because we have far more in common in our you know, messed up society. Still, the issues are that come down to the reality of it. Is if, you do, if you're having a problem accepting people, and we're talking about more than accepting, you know that, to receive them as Christ Jesus receives you. Huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, to understand the forbearance of God that is towards you. <laughs> that God was not, you know, in your state of sin and iniquity, in the place of the absence of who he is, his holiness is in his glory. That the goodness of God was willing to work with you and to bring you to a place of repentance. Are you willing to work with a person with pink hair, five earrings in their eyebrows, and whatever else? Are you willing to see them and go grab them and say, I'm so glad you're here. Come sit over here with me. Because that's what Christ Jesus, I'm talking about 10 million versus 10,000. I'm going to get there. 10 million. Your, your debt was, are you listening to me? Your debt was 10 million. Which really in that context of when Jesus says a thousand talents and a ta 10,000 talents rather, and a talent is basically on the modern day value of about a thousand dollars. Are you with me? A talent is about on a modern day scale about a thousand dollars. And he's he takes and he brings this guy to his master, a master making him bring it, come into an account for his debt. And his debt is 10,000 talents. That's 10 million bucks. Are you with me? I think I did my math right. That's 10 million bucks. And the man falls down and says, please have mercy upon me. Give me time. I will pay. And the, and the master responds to him and sees, you know, his brokenness and his humility. And, and the master forgives him all his debt. All of it. Doesn't it just say, I'm going to give you time to pay? He forgives it. He erases the debt. And then we're all having a hallelujah running around the place. Praise God. Woo! Save, save, wonderfully save, wash in the blood of the Lamb. We're talking about the blessings of God. And then right after we leave the meeting, we think, hey, I know some, I'm doing good now. I was, I was 10 million behind, now I'm 10 million ahead. Hey? Wow, this is good. There's a person who owes me 10,000 bucks. A hundred pence. Remember, remember the woman with the alabaster box? Her alabaster box was about, worth about 300 pence. was basically a, a, a year's wage. And so that's how we kind of understand what the value of a pence is or a denarii. Here's somebody who owes me one-third of a year's salary, 10,000 bucks. And he goes and he grabs them by the throat. Coming out of that kind of grace, that kind of love, that kind of mercy... That kind of forgiveness. He goes and he grabs them by the throat. And he says, you're going to pay it all right now. Or I'm throwing you in prison. And what does the Lord say concerning this? And he's, he's talking about the way we accept one another. The way that we treat one another. The way that we are patient with one another. Forbearing with one another. Listen, you know what? I'm a, can, I, can I shock you? The Lord gave all that he anointed as ministers the right to retain your sin. I just want to shock you. Can I shock you? And it said more than one place. That, and it not, was, this is not in general. This is to those apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And of course, we know that the Orthodox Church, both Greek, Orthodox, Roman, Catholic, and others, really took that, you know, and utilized that as a, as a powerful, uh, manipulative weapon. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about for the genuine reality that we, as Christ ministers, have been given the power to retain sins or to lose them. That's pretty radical, huh? Yeah. Praise God that all of his ministers have their, his heart, and they, if they're truly his ministers standing in his stead, they have the same response that Christ Jesus has. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. huh? They release them. There was, one, there was one example where Paul, there's two examples where Paul retained sins. One of them was a radical one. Huh? There's actually three examples where the apostles retained sin. I forgot about Ananias and Sapphira as a retaining of sin. It's not a forgiving or releasing of it. Yeah. Are you with me? It's a judgment that comes. 
uh, in the Church of Corinth. He said, those that are doing those things, I'll give them over right now to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the Spirit may be saved in the day of judgment. And I mean, I'm not going to go into all that, but I just want to shock you for a moment. I want to grab your attention in this, in this culture that we live in to where that you has made you believe that you are in charge and that you command the day. And that everybody's got to listen to you or you're going to just go and do what you want to do and find your little group. The church is in a little group to where that we get to do whatever we want to do. The church is the body of Christ. It's the, it's the, it's the glorious family of God. And we're being trained to walk by, in Father's ways to show forth his love, his glory, his goodness, what it looks like to live with him forever, who Christ Jesus is in our conduct, in our behavior, not just in our word, but in our deed, which is far more important. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the miracle that's happening yes, right now. Yes. Thank you, Father, for the letting go. Because the Lord sees he tries your hearts with his word. His word is like a fire. His word tries your heart. He sees you where you're basically trying to self-justify. Or you're saying, oh, God, forgive me. Huh? Amen. He sees it. You can do whatever you want to do. The reality of it is, Papa is on the level of truth. I want to stay in connection with him. I want to let the word of God be that which smites me, corrects me, instructs me. I want to be the word of God. I want the word of God to rule me at every. I want to, I know that there is great wealth and riches in the word of God better than any wealth or wealth or riches that could be attained in this world. And beyond that, I mean, there's it's a, that pales to describe the beauty of the riches, the unsearchable riches of Christ that are here for you and me, the treasure of God in our life and for our life throughout eternity. Man, I love real estate. I love the land. I fall in love with the land, even desert. I was like, wow, that's beautiful. I mean, I love the land. I'm going to tell you right, I'm, right now, I look at all God's creation and I go, my goodness, I can't even begin to imagine how much I'm going to be in love with the beauty of all this wonderful thing called heaven when all of the creation is freed from the bondage of darkness and from the bondage of the interference of sin. What Father has planned is going to be the most beautiful thing. I'm not going to miss out on it. I'm going to be darkness burning in hell while everybody else is having a good time in the, pre in the presence of the Lord. Huh? If I can't obey any other way, I'm going to obey just because I'm not, I'm not, going, to, I'm not going to be in prison. God ordained the powers. Romans 13. He ordained the powers to show you what's really going on. That if you do wrong, you're going to suffer for it. Go read the law. Go run a red light. Leave here, run two red lights. I bet you're going to get caught before you, on the second one. And you need to be. You know, if somebody runs a red light, what are you saying? Where are the police when you really need them? Are you with me? Yeah. Huh? They start having a drag, they're drag racing down the 15, right? Are you with me? Yeah. Right, 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 but right at Riverside, starting right, you know, midway in Riverside County. Are you with me? Yeah. It's crazy stuff, eh? <laughs> they come rushing. You're, you're going, you're like pushing the speed limit at 74. And somebody just basically blows the doors, literally shakes your car. I had somebody come by and shake the truck in a little small car. They had some nitro blowing through that thing. Are you with me? These guys were flying. That's, that's wrong. Where are the police when you need them? And the way they're cutting through traffic, somebody might die around here. People, listen, the, the laws and the governances of God. Today, we just got to begin to understand that if one star with one planet, with one of the, those, you know, things that Father placed within the solar system would disobey his decrees, his judgment, everything would become chaos. So it is with us. So it is with us. Why won't we listen? Why don't we understand the severity and, and the repercussions of our actions? Somehow we won't. We just, why? Self-interest, selfishness, being locked up and imprisoned within the concepts of what we think and not ruled by the Word of God. Because when you're ruled with the Word of God, divine insight comes and shows you something so much more beautiful than you. Shows you a thought and a wisdom that goes way beyond your thoughts and wisdom. Shows you a person that it just eclipses all other things and suddenly you want to be like him. And it don't, doesn't matter what the price is. I want to be with you. I want to be on your side. And then he tells you, no, I freely give you everything I got. And it's like, what? Yeah, I freely give you everything. Hey, listen, we go around telling, God's telling everybody, God's freely given us everything that he's got. 
I mean, I haven't taken him up on it yet, but he's freely given us everything. It, are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. I mean, he's invited us in the Holy Holy. I'm still outside on the court because I'm not ready to go in yet, but we can all go in. What's, what sense does that even make? Because you can't, it hasn't touched your heart yet. It has to become a reality, the invitation to his fullness, the invitation to be able to behold him. Are you kidding me? Man, as soon as that becomes a living reality, you're going to do, you're going to divest yourself of whatever's in the way. Yeah. And it's proven over and again in your life and in your interest. Your interest, the things that are really valuable to you, will stand before you on the day of judgment and be contrasted and compared to the opportunities that God gave you. And today, we want to do everything possible to bring you into an encounter with Jesus Christ, to an encounter with the beauty of his word. I mean, you stepped out. People, many people have stepped out, and they called upon the name of the Lord and the beauty and the glory of that environment. But then they were imprisoned by religion, or for some reason, they didn't go on. And you've got to understand, that's the place of your heart becoming hardened. That's a place of self-justification. It's so easy to get advancements quickly if with a true and sincere heart you come into the kingdom. And, it's so, it, it, and it becomes everything that God has presented it to be. It, the value of it is what it should be. Then you're going to go all the way. You're not going to have a halt between two opinions, have a mixture. Well, I wanted to have this and I want to have this at the same time. And still walk in the blessings of God. Praise God for his long suffering and his patience and his mercy. But the long-suffering and the patience is mercy is not so that you can continue on misbehaving and living your own life and then still make heaven. Because that's not what God says. His long-suffering and his mercy and his patience is there so that you and I can ultimately get it. It's just all I'm saying is the longer you wait, the harder it is to get it. And people that are born in religion, they were not born in, in, in Pentecost. They were born in religion, Christian religion, not in Pentecost, not in the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's even a harder task. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So look, we're up against it, but you know what? God has given us the divine power and ability to deal with this thing. Amen. You listen to me. You better get passionate quick. If you don't get passionate quick, you're going to ultimately turn out to be something that is far less than what God's purpose should be. I, I dispassionate, a dispassionate behavior toward the Lord is unacceptable. Unless I can come and poke you with a pin and you don't do nothing. Are you with me? Yeah. If I bring the branding iron, I... And you sit there. Okay, then I get it. There's something serious. We, we, there needs to be a miracle. Okay? Mentally and physically. Are you with me? But if I poke you with a pin, you go, ow! Are you with me? Or I put a branding iron on you, which is going to be far worse. I would never do such a thing, so don't say, ah, oh, he's going to put a branding iron on you. <laughs> that hurts so bad, you'd probably punch me. <laughs> huh? You would get radical. Are you with me? Yeah. It'd just be a reflex, right? Yeah. It would be. But how about, how about the response, the depths of the passion and response to the Word of God right now? Then I'm not saying that it has to be an outburst or display of expression, but it needs to be an outburst and display of, 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 a, of a heart response to saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to obey you. Yes. I'm getting it right today. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm, this day is the beginning of the rest of my life. Yes. Today is the beginning of the rest of eternity for me. Yes. Up, in this time, up into this time, I've done it my way, saying it's God's way. You know how many people said it was God's way during the days of the kings? Some of you are reading kings right now. They said they were doing God's way. They said they were right. They were saying, wherein have we sinned? We're the holy people of God. Are you with me? Yeah. Who do you think you are? We also are the holy people of God. Who said that? That is a chorus statement. Are you with me? That same demon still speaks today. Who do you think you are? We also are the holy people of God. It's not, it's not within the framework of lowliness, not within the framework of the... Of the, of the Spirit of Jesus. It's not within the framework of humility. It's not within the framework of that which God demands you and I to have if we're going to step into a place of yieldingness to him, oneness with him. He's granted oneness. He's granted oneness to us, but we have to be willing to obey the principles and rules and laws of the spirit of life of oneness. Otherwise, there's going to be no oneness for you, men. It's going to be you and God. With God giving you an opportunity for oneness, and you're saying, praise God for oneness, but never coming into it. Come on, people, let's just let, let God, the Holy Spirit, 
show us the life that he's purposed for us to live. Let me finish reading Romans 15, because I pretty much gave you Romans, I pretty much gave you Matthew 18, didn't I? I did. And um, but we've got to just we've got to see it for the full extent that it is. That when we begin to say, when we begin to look at First John chapter three, I'm just letting the Holy Ghost direct me. And I got my thing, and He said, "No, I'll do this one." That's your verse of scripture next, but this is my next verse of scripture. It's good. To, it's good to hear him, hey. First John chapter three. Praise God. I think it's probably around verse fourteen, huh? Because that's the, this is the state of things. Here it is. This is. This message of the Lord Jesus Christ coming to bear within the framework of our attitude and our behavior. You know, when you're surrounded by love, you don't even see somebody transgressing against, transgressing against you. That's why love covers a multitude of sin. You don't even notice. I didn't know. Did you see how they disrespected you? No, I didn't even notice. Just love them. Huh? My wife, after 34 years, still thinks I'm perfect. Are you kidding me? I'm like, baby, are, are, are you? I rarely know you believe this. But, I mean, can I just probe you a little bit on this? How about that time I hollered at you? That wasn't perfect. Huh? How, how about that time I got, you know, disrespectful towards you, upset about this little thing? That wasn't perfect. She said, I don't even remember. What? Huh? Love covers a multitude of sin. Love didn't even know I, love didn't even know you transgressed against me. Love didn't even know you, that you persecuted me. Love didn't even know you dishonored me. Love didn't never even notice because love has no selfishness attached to it. Love is all about you, not about me. That's so I praise God for my wife who's just so shown me the love of Jesus. Huh? I want everybody, I pray in Jesus' name, every one of you guys have such a marriage. You can't have it unless you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You can say you're going to love and you're going to honor and you're going to be good. You're like, what? Are you kidding me? Give me a break. It's sweet and kind and wonderful and everything of you. But you know what? It ain't going to ever happen until you're full of the Holy Ghost. You go out to the kingdom of God. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I know I'm a little bit more gentle one-on-one. -on -one. I try to go a little easier. But in this place, you know, right now, Father's, I'm, I'm just under the spirit of Jesus completely and entirely. I want to be under the spirit of Jesus all the time. Yeah. All the time. And it's radical. If it's just raw, it's radical, it's intense. <laughs> He's amazing. Amen. He's intense in his love. Amen. He's intense in his judgments. Amen. He is. Yes. He's intense in his goodness. Yes. I like all of his intensity. Yes. Every bit of it. I'm in. Yes. Forever. You don't want to miss out on this, people. No. I, I'll tell you right now, you play games on God, it's going to devastate your life. Uh -huh. You put everything you got on the altar. Amen. You don't hold on tightly to anything in this world. Yes. You do, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to have a backlash. Yes. Uh, you listen to me. Yes. He says to this, I want to finish reading this, and I want to go to 1 John 3. I'm grabbing my Bible here. Okay? That you may be one mind and one mouth, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God. When I notice by the Spirit of the Lord that that isn't going on, I'm on it. I'm not on it for your destruction. I'm not on it to pick on you. I'm on it because we, we together want something bigger than all of this other stuff. We want the fullness of who he is. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the Lord says he predicates knowing him by this love relationship. He said being rooted in the ground and is settled in love. Then you can comprehend with all saints. And, and, and it's only in this atmosphere where we're in one place with one mind in one accord that God the Holy Ghost comes in his fullness. And so why then wouldn't we want somebody who's got discernment and divine insight who can speak as an oracle of God to tell us what's in the way and not be upset because it didn't come to our, in a way that we like or in, in, in a sound in which we can accept. Why rather than we didn't just, we so hunger for God more than we hunger for stuff for ourselves. We so hunger for his approval more than anyone else's approval that we bow low instantly and immediately say, I want what God's got. I, why should I play pretend? Why should I somehow linger and not jump all the way in? Are you listening to me? He says, for this reason, even the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, accept one another then. With, this is what you got to have. This is, this, is the, this is absolutely prerequisite so that you can accept then, so you can accept one another then just as Christ accepted you. Hallelujah. 
there's some things about love and there's some things about the rules of love that can only operate by the Holy Ghost that is going to result in the body of Christ, the church ever being the body of Christ. Are you listening to me? The church to be the body of Christ has to be a living body being filled with God, the Holy Ghost. And you don't do any, the body doesn't do anything that the spirit doesn't dictate. And God's telling us the rules of it. He's laying it out very clearly. And yet what will happen is people individually will retreat to their own self-interest and what they perceive and what they think and the way they believe it's supposed to happen. Well, then the Lord has to sort that out. And he sorted out, look how long he sorted out in Israel. Praise God, it only took him 40 years to sort it out. After, you know, it was 430 years in development and then 40 years to sort it out. But that was under the fire cloud. Oh, God, come bring your fire cloud, sort it out. I know, Father, you know respect a person. Let your fire cloud, what, if my fire cloud comes, then people are going to die. If my fire cloud comes, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to be severe in judgment. I'm going to tell you, right. I'm going to give you some more time to think about it. Understand God's long-suffering. Because to, to whom more is given, more is required. I promise you God has given us more in the New Testament age than anyone has ever had. And Father's looking at us going, no, I see how you're handling my word. I see how you're responding to this thing that I say. I see how you respond, respond to my authority. Because I'm going to tell you one of those things within the household of God is not just your relationships at home, which are so important. Because you can't, if you can't do it at home, you can't do it at church. Your relationships at church. But then even more, God puts above that your relationship with the authority that he's placed in the church. Ooh. There is more scary stuff going on there than any place else. Are you listening to me? And we just got to be willing to get it right. We just got to be willing to get it right. And you know how to get it right? Just get filled with his love. That's just all it takes. You, you want to see the great display of God's power and glory manifested to a lost and dying world? It's his love. It's his love that proves discipleship. It's his love that proves the light of this world. It's his love that proves out salt, preserving power. It's his love, the love, the kind that Jesus showed us, not the kind of pretend religion that you believe you have. Because I'm contrasting compared to the love, and I'm crying out to God, oh, God, let me step into that love. Are you with me? There's no love like that love. That love has no offense. You can't be in that love and have an offense. You can't be in that love and live out your own life. You can't be in that love and not show the full display of the power of the Holy Ghost. Signs, wonders, miracles, and character. Can you hear me? Can I break this down for you people? Because I tell you right now, it's always trying to, it, it's the blind spot. It's where somebody thinks they understand something, so you tell them, trying to tell them over and over again what it is that you're, want them to understand and, and they, they don't get it. It's a blind spot. Well, I believe I have that. Well, go read the Bible. Go sit down. Just sit down for just a few moments with Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 20, back up to 19. And, and do a checklist, right? Put all of them out there. 17 works of the flesh, right? Nine fruits of the Spirit. And check how many is in your life. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes. Did you get that? Yes. 17 plus 9, 26. Check of those. How many is in your life of the 26? How could you ever conform to something that you don't even understand the image of it? The Lord told us to be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. We've got to understand the image, the glory, the beauty of it. I'm going to try to close with this. I want you to grab this. What am I doing? What am I doing? Say, ask me, what are we, say, Pastor, what are you doing, everybody? Pastor, what are you doing? Trying to bring you to repentance. That's all. That's all. Trying to bring, show you the things that you've allowed in your life that are contrary to the ways of God, nature of God that you've justified so that you will abhor them and turn into the Lord. Yes. Because once we turn into the Lord, then we're going to have all those things that God describes in his word because he's faithful God. Amen. He's not withholding. He's not looking at a person. He's not looking at a group of people that somehow are being deprived of, of his fire, but yet, you know, are you listening to me? Yes. Yeah. Yet they fully meet the conditions of it. That's not true. He's calling us. Amen. He's calling us individually. He's calling us collectively. He's calling us within the context and framework of our homes. 
He's calling us within the context and the framework of our, our relationships with our family. He's calling us in the context of the church and our relationship with the church. So let's look at this verse of scripture in 1 John chapter 3 real quickly. Once again, it's just saying it's the 10 million verses. It's the 10 million verses 10,000. Lord knows it's challenging. 10,000. Huh? $10,000. How many of you can save $10,000? It's hard to save 10,000 bucks, isn't it? He understands this is a difficult thing. Somebody owes you $10,000 and you need it now. Are you with me? And what is he asking you to do? What is he, what is he asking you to do? First John chapter 3. Chapter four, verse 14. Says, the Lord says this. We know that we pass from death to life because we love the brethren. The problem is, is that people just read that and they don't deal with what it means to love the brethren. What, what love are we talking about? Tolerance? What love are we talking about? I'm abused and threatened, but I'll still continue to come to the meeting. Com I mean, can we contrast and compare ourselves of God's holiness and he's willing to come after me and, and you know you're worse to me than I am to me did you notice that is there anybody who doesn't believe that are you with me come on don't adjust your halo get raw and real are you with me <laughs> come on people he's willing come on of course he would die for me I mean after all you know how I feel about me no, when Holy Ghost conviction, the reality and the contrast comes, people, it ain't there no more. Holiness causes you to bend low and be in awe of the con You mean you, you, Lord, you and who you are and the purity and the holiness. Can I help you with something? Can I, can I get this, can we get, bring you all into reality? There's only one person that you won't have to forgive. Are you with me? There's only one person that you will never have to forgive, and that's Jesus. Amen. And the Father and the Holy Ghost. Everybody else, you forgive and you're spending your 10,000 over and again. Yeah. Huh? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Do you get this? Yes. Oh, I can't believe what they did. Well, why can't you believe it? Look how ugly you are. Yeah. Are you with me? Why can't you believe you? Are you kidding me? Climb down off of your high tower. Climb down off your throne for just a moment. Are you kidding me? There's no compassion, there's no loneliness, there's no meekness to restore a brother or a sister in love and meekness. There's no, there's no laying down your life to where that you can absolutely be free and unencumbered by all self-interest to go and minister to them as Christ comes to minister to you. God invited us, Are you he invited me to be one with him. That's more than 10 million. But of course, in the culture, 10 million would be like us trying to get 10 trillion in our heads. Right? That's the wealth of kings at best. Are you, oh man, if I can just have an encounter, understand the relationship and the encounter, it, it is essential to have the response. <laughs> I have to have a change of heart to be able to get this. And Father's given us a change of heart, but you've got to come under the discipline of the Spirit so you can function in it. Huh? God's given you the change of heart and the invitation in, but you've got to be willing to hunger and thirst for all that he has so that you can experience all the glory that he's given. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here's what the Lord says. We know that we pass from death to life because we love the brethren. Listen, he's going to define this a little bit for us. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. To me... That's, that hits so hard. Wait a minute. The Lord's just making it very, very clear. If I don't love like he loves, I'm abiding in death. I don't care what my doctrine is on, what my salvific theology is, it does not matter. That means what my doctrine on salvation is, it doesn't matter. He's laying it out on the basis of fruit. Yeah. He had a covenant with Israel and he said over and again, yeah, I got a covenant with you, my people, you don't have the fruit. And ultimately, he worked with them and worked with them and worked with them. And ultimately, he said, okay, forget about it. From this day, from this day forward, your house is a desolation. I don't know if the Lord ever saying that to me. 
I mean, I'm kept by the power of God through faith and salvation, but I'm willing to be obedient. Yeah. And the obedience is has to be there. I'm willing to hear the voice of God and come under his rule. I'm not going to be an anarchist. No. I'm not going to be a person who basically defies his authority and walk around like I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. I'm going to come under his authority. I'm going to obey his rule. I'm going to do what he says to do. Amen. Well, then I want you to get started today, says the Lord. Amen. I want you to go ahead and give yourself a total abandonment to these things. And understand, what is it that's holding you back from surrendering all? What is it that's holding you back from total abandonment to the things of the Spirit? How is it that you can continue to condone behavior that is different from Jesus? Just don't do it anymore because it's a prison. It's keeping you back from the blessings of God. So the Lord defines it a little bit more. He said, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. With God, there's only hate and love. And he defines love by what Jesus did, and that's it. And what Jesus showed us and who God is and, and, and that is in his love is described. The fundamentals of his love is lowliness, poor in spirit. Remember Matthew 5, 3? Blessed are the lowly. Blessed are the poor in spirit. There wasn't even Greek words for that. There really weren't any Greek words because such a concept was despised by the Greeks. Because everything about their thing was pride and arrogance. It literally did not agree, uh, uh, apply in any Greek literature except for one place. This particular word for lowliness or poor in spirit. It is found in the Septuagint. And you know where it's found? Isaiah 66, 1. Behold. Isaiah, Isaiah 66, 2. What does the Lord say? But unto this man will I look. I'm not, I'm not dwelling anywhere. I will, you will not find me anywhere. I don't care what covenant they say the end. I don't care how wonderful they say they are. I don't care how many verses of scriptures they say they can quote or that they can quote. I won't be there. I will be where there is lowliness, brokenness, or poor in spirit. Ooh. Jesus says, come and learn of me. Come and learn of me. Where is that defined? It's defined in a relationship. I see it in the behavior when when Allie walks over to some of those girls that came to the, came to the door and, and bends down and begins to sow genuine acceptance and love, and you can see it's just the love of Jesus. It's not just, it's not just the outgoingness of Allie and, and, or the outgoingness of Amy. And many of you are outgoing, and I don't want to be leaving any names out. I'm just taking a particular example as I witnessed it here today. Huh? God, the Holy Ghost, is very outgoing. And if you're not outgoing, there's something of this world and of death and of darkness that holds you in bondage. Don't you tell me, oh, it's uh, genetics. Are you kidding me? You're supposed to be tracing your family tree to Jesus. Yes. Directly to Jesus. That's what the Word of God says. That's faith in the Word of God. That's faith in the new birth. That's faith in being born again. That's faith in being begotten of God. Amen. That's faith in being the sons and daughters of the Almighty. Are you listening to me? I'm just, I really believe that people are getting it. What you yes. do with it is up to you. But there's nothing more lovely than Jesus. Amen. There's nothing more beautiful than heaven. Amen. There's nothing more glorious than his presence. You know, you know how you come in and you experience the presence of the Lord, especially when we're singing? Yes. Oh, because Father, mm -mm -mm. huh? Oh, I just loved, I would love to teach on praise and living for his praise, but living for his glory and living for his praise and giving praise and thanksgiving to God is all a dimension of his glory. And we're, we're, we're talking about this greater manifestation of glory. We're talking about something that's far more beautiful than what you're experiencing when, there's just, when nobody's on your case. Are you with me? Yes. When everybody's just worshiping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, can we just worship the whole meeting? No. <laughs> As beautiful as it is, can we just, <clears throat> can we just, you know, speak in the heavenly language the whole meeting? No. Why? Because you need to be instructed. Yes. People are always asking me about raising the kids. I'm, I'm telling them over and over again, you've got to always have three things. In principle, you've got to always have two things. Correction, instruction, and encouragement. And if you don't do all three, your kids are not going to be right. And what we're going to do is... And we're very careful. We've got to be careful because they'll be doing a lot of things right and we don't give them the kind of, you know, thank you that we should give them. But they do something wrong. We're on it quickly. Are you with me? Yeah. There's always got to be, we got to, there's got to be both. <laughs> but when there's things that need to be corrected, and I'm, I'm going to rule the house of God. I don't care what anybody tells me. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you're going to give an account for you. I'm going to give an account for me. 
My, my giving account is much bigger than your giving account. You just got to give an account for you. I got to give an account for myself and the household of faith. Yeah. And every place the Father has made me influential in the kingdom as one of his servants standing there as one of his apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do my job. And I pray that you do your job. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for him, to him. And I pray that you live for him and to him. Amen. And I pray that you understand the reality of it and don't make it on the pretense of what you believe it is. Because the whole world out there is serving God on the pretense of what they think is acceptable to God. And, and most folks have enough discernment to recognize, wait, that the Jehovah's Witness are not acceptable to God. But are you acceptable to God? <laughs> I, I can say that the Jewish community are not acceptable to God. But am I acceptable to God? And the basis of that is fruit. Yeah. Amen. The basis of that is the evidence of the fruit of my life. Does it look like Jesus? He says, if you don't love, you're abiding in death. Yeah. He tells us, he gives a very clear insight to this wonderful, this three attributes of love. I want you to get this because we're going to go off of it tonight. Because it's the, it's the essential need of Pentecost. Without lowliness, meekness, and long-suffering towards one another... You can't be one, have one heart and one mind. You cannot be in one accord. Without that, Holy Ghost ain't coming. Without that, God isn't going to honor it. And say, oh, well, I'm just going to leave because I know the problem. I know I'm the problem. Okay, you know what? You go to Walmart on your way home. <laughs> buy yourself a spine. They got them on sale right now. That's ridiculous. No, God's looking for valiant people. You say, no, 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 I'm going to do this thing. What are you, what are you talking about? I'm going to be a part of this. Yes. What are you going to do when you go home? What's at home? Are you with me? Ask the disciples. There's nothing at home. Where else shall we go? You alone have the words of life. This is a hard saying. This seems almost impossible to do, but where else can we go? We want to get this. We're going to get this. Yes. We're, going to, we're going to do this. I'm not going to abandon San Diego. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be strong in San Diego. Things are going to be radical in San Diego. Hallelujah. I got to read the next verse because it breaks it down, doesn't it? Wherefore, he says, whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. We wouldn't think of that that way. We wouldn't think that someone's a murderer just because they're not showing the same love that Jesus showed to us. Huh? Hello. Anyone still here? Huh? It's like a friend of mine said he started to preach to people on, on the airplane because the airplane was getting ready to crash and their spirits had all left their body. Somebody's like, it looks like your spirits already left your body. Dude, come on back. Huh? Come on back. I'm going to say it again. We would never think that it's an act of murder against a person just because we didn't show them the same love that Jesus showed us. True. That we didn't have the same kind of abandonment to the spirit of God that Christ Jesus had? No, no, it ain't the same. That's too extreme. People always accuse me of being extreme. Well, this, it's a valid position. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. Not even a great company. Yeah. That's extreme. Yes, yeah. That is, ex I don't know, if, you know. I've never been that extreme. I've never been that extreme. That not showing the love of Jesus Christ to someone is the same as murder. I just want to hold on this for just a minute. Hold, hold, and then we'll attack in a second. Hold. I want to deal with it for what, how he looks at it. Because these things are non-negotiables with God. They're the difference of life and death. They're the difference of heaven and hell. They're the difference of his ways and the ways of the demonic. We don't see it that extreme. But God's going to give us the grace and the ability if we'll open up our hearts and our ears and our eyes to him. Huh? Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few will listen. Many are called, but few will do what he demands. I mean, how passionate are you about being chosen? Oh, Lord, use me. Don't refuse me. Please choose me. And does these things just slip by you or do you lay hold on them? As... as what they are, Amen. salvation. Amen. Paul was radical about these things. I'm on John now, I know, but Paul was radical about them. We'll get back to them. We're just going to do this. Total abandonment. I'm going to learn how to do it. It's a discipline. 
to this moment. I, don't, I want to see myself grabbing people by the throat and saying, give me my 10000 now. Because we're never going to look at it that way. We're going to justify it. They owe it to me. They owe it to me, and I have been long-suffering and patient, and it's mine. It's mine, and they're depriving me, and all the other stuff that we're going to give in our own hallucination as a justified, you know, explanation. For why we feel and behave the way we do. And never will it cross our mind that this has nothing to do with the Spirit of Christ or the Spirit of the Lord. The most broken, the most lowly, the most hospitable, the most given to the nature of the Spirit of God and of Jesus Christ of anybody you can find on the planet. If I don't have it all, I want it all more passionately than anybody else. I'm going to beat you in this race. Are you with me? Yes. And then you need to turn back to me and say, I'm going to beat you in this race. That's right. Come on now. That ain't disrespect. Hey, that's respect to the Father, to the authority. Because huh? I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have to run. You don't have to, you don't have to pick up. I'm going to tell you right now, we're not counting no little, you know, baby steps. Somebody said something the other day, and, and Daniel didn't like it. Said said, you need to go get, you know, Cairo's uh, trophy out of Phil's trash can. <laughs> said, you need to go get Cairo's trophy out of Phil's trash can. Because Cairo came home with a trophy. They were the least in all of the league in soccer. And not only were they least of all the leagues in soccer, soccer, but their team was the most defeated. They were last, in other words. And so they gave them a trophy for being the most defeated. Phil snatched it out of Cairo's hands, threw in the garbage, and says, we do not get trophies for losing. And I'm like, Phil, come on, man. This society has warped everybody's perspective of what it means to do what's right and to win. Huh? Come on. Hallelujah. I loved it. You need to go get Cairo's trophy out of Phil's trash can and give it back to him. We're not giving trophies for losing. You're not going to get one for losing. Oh, I lost. I discovered in my weakness. Don't give me that other stuff because that is a misapplication of verse of Scripture. When I'm weak. No, it ain't even that, that's not what he's saying. It's when you don't do anything of yourself anymore. <laughs> and it's not depending upon the strength of your, of your own ability or the arm of flesh that then Christ Jesus can be manifested and revealed. Hallelujah. 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 I mean, God knew how controlling Paul was. Paul was very controlling. They weren't moving fast enough on the Christians. Hey, guys, he goes to the high priest. You guys aren't doing it right. Give me letters right now to go bind them, throw them in prison. Yeah. Father knew. <laughs> I'm going to give him an abundance of revelation, but we're going to have to keep him kind of on a short leash, so to speak. Huh? So the Lord allowed him to have an angel of Satan buffet him every day. Buffet him. So he wouldn't be exalted. I take that personally. Search me, O oh God. What things am I allowing? Or so what things would, would I allow to run ruin in my life? Oh, let it not be. Let it not even be counted. Man, be so submitted to the Holy Ghost. People, here's two hands for beginners. I'm just going to say, okay, Lord, I want these things. These are essential. I'm going to get these things as essential. They're going to be in my life, and I'm going to recognize that there's a practical evidence. It's how I'm treating everybody around me. It's how I'm responding. How I'm valuing. Because every one of you created the image and likeness of God with the purpose of ruling and reigning with him, given an empowerment of his majesty and of his glory from birth. And then that is accelerated to a whole nother level when you and I now have been bought back and purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? And I'm not going to value that? Are you listening to me? And I'm not going to have long suffering towards that and mercy and patience towards that? I am. I am. And I pray that you will too. I pray that you always make a, a place or a seat right beside you for everybody in the ministry, for everybody in the meeting. You're making room. Huh? 
you're, you're, you're running through thoughts in your heart and your mind about everybody in the place. You're making a place for them. Amen. 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 You may have to turn to them a couple times and say, shut up. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. But that's good. Because people have done got a false impression of love. When you're wrong, you need to be corrected. Yes. Amen. When there's something that doesn't look like Jesus, you need to get it right right now. Yes. And then if you're serious with God, when they tell you that, you're not going to be offended. You're going to go, thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. You're not going to be self, you're not going to be full of pride and arrogance. You're going to be full of lowliness and humility. Amen. Or forgive me, lowliness and meekness. Are you with me? Yes. Ooh, can you can you can you can you capture such love? Yes. Ooh. Hereby perceive we the, hereby we perceive. We understand. We get an insight. It's a very interesting word. I'm not going to get. I'm not going to lock down on it right now. But I want you to know, it's not a word that tells us that we've got the full revelation of it. But we begin to perceive it. Ah, I've got, oh, oh, it's that direction over there, right? You know, you're trying to find out where you're at on the map. You're looking for the, you're looking for the, you know, the, the land marker, huh? And then all of a sudden, you, you search around enough to realize, wait a minute, we're not in the right place. Oh, and then we finally know, oh, yeah, here it is. I know it's right over there. I perceive it. It's right over there. Let's go over there. And sure enough, as you go over there, it, it's right there. You just perceived it. Your perception just honed in on where the marker is that you're looking for. Hereby, we perceive. We're honed in now. We're honed in the love of God. The love he's talking about, the kind of love that if you don't have, you're a murderer. Let us, let, let's learn love because when you learn love, there's going to be honor there. When you learn love, there's going to be honor. There's going to be glory. There's going to be reverence. There's going to be respect. I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Ghost is never going to mingle with a demon spirit. And you can, you, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> but there's always going to be a call. Repent, get it right. Do what's right. Here it is. Here's your opportunity. Come to me. I love you. Amen. Repent. My first love you are. Do you know what kind of obedience that is? Do you know what consecration and dedication? My first love to me. To really to say that, you hear what we're saying? God's kingdom is ruled by love because everybody who loves him obeys him. And it's not a legalistic obey, obeying. Huh? I miss my darling right now. And that ain't, I'm not about to say, you got, you've been away for her for now for almost not quite 24 hours, but you, yeah, 24 hours. You've been away from her, and you're supposed to be missing her. No, it's in me. It's in me. Are you with me? This isn't legal. This is relational. This is how you speak. You're preaching legalism. It's only legal because you don't want to do it. And you've got to have a basically somebody, you know, threatening you to do it. I'm not talking about no legalism. I'm talking about relationalism. There's an opportunity for us to just move on in deeper than ever before. Hey, raise your hands right now. Lift your hands towards heaven. John Sam, lift your hands right here. Thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name. I want him to be able to do that for the rest of his life. I pray that you would do that. If you get start getting all fussy and looking all weird. I walk up to you, so I raise your hand right now. You're like, well, I don't need to raise my hand. You're picking on me again? I can't believe it. You embarrassed me. You humiliated me in front of everybody. No one even knew I was talking about you. Well, let me see if I can stop. Hard. <laughs> I'm going to finish right now. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Can you see the full picture of it or just run by it? Can you see the full picture of it? He left majesty, glory, authority, honor, everything that only belongs to God. And he came all the way down into a place of servitude to be servant to a homosexual. To be servant to an adulterer. To be servant to a prostitute. Servant to a thief. 
servant to men filled with all manner of demon power and unholiness. Let me tell you about the long suffering of Jesus. Let me tell you about the goodness of God. This is, he's defining love. Are you listening to me over here? Huh? If you can't, God has commanded us to love those who hate us, and we're having problems loving those who love us. We're having problems here baptizing the Holy Ghost, grappling with the definition of love. That is insane. That is, that is, that is well, I should say, maybe remarkable. It shouldn't be. But yet we see that Paul had to do it over and over again, and John had to do it over and over again because there was divisions, because there was strife, because people were living in worldliness. Defining things after the framework of their own thinking. Where did you get that thinking from? The world. That's worldliness. That's why Jesus actually called the religious people of the covenant, the Jews, and applied the term worldly to them more than he did anyone else. More than any other place, the application of worldliness was to the religious covenant people. Are you with me? I do not want to be one of the religious covenant people, neither do you. Because we're not going to have any, we're not going to end up in the Qualcomm Stadium over here. We're going to walk through the fire of this. We're going to walk this out everywhere we go. We're going to have signs and wonders and miracles, and they're going to build. And everywhere, and every time you obey, you're going to get filled. And every time you respond to God, you're going to find yourself more and more conformed. And every time you walk this out, and every day you walk this out, you're going to find yourself in every way growing up into him who is the head, even Christ Jesus. You're going to find yourself maturing and growing into the fullness of the measure of Christ Jesus. Because what's going to happen as you walk this out, you're going to see the things in your life that are absolutely absolutely foreign to the kingdom of God and absolutely opposite to the nature of Jesus Christ. And you're going to despise it and you're going to abhor, abhor it and you're going to turn away from it. And as a result, you're going to find your life conformed to the image. Does that make sense? I hope it does because that's the way it works. Let me finish this verse of scripture. Hereby we perceive. Now it's, it's there in that direction for sure. It's the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Ten million. Say 10 million. 10 million. He laid down his life for us and forgave us of 10 million, all the debt that we owed. So we ought also <laughs> to do the exact same thing, lay down our lives for the brethren, 10,000. He stepped down from the halls of glory and the eternalness of his power and authority to take upon himself the nature and the likeness of human, man, uh, of human flesh, rather. The likeness, not the nature. Take on the likeness of human flesh. Only nature by virtue of likeness. And then in that love, step down from there. Because he could have done that and been king of the world. Are you with me? Yeah. He, could have take, he could have stepped down from the halls of glory and come into this world and been master ruler of the world. And still, that, my goodness, that defines Savior. Are you with me? I mean, that could be defined of a savior. Most of saviors are defined like King David, right? King. King, biggest king, best king, strongest king. Are you with me? So he could have stepped down from the halls of glory, been absolutely the king of this world, which he is now and will always forever be, king of the universe. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the king of the universe forever. But he didn't. He stepped all the way down and became nothing. Wow. Come on, people. If you won't apply this to your relationships at home, you won't have heaven in, in, home, in your home. If you won't apply this relationship, this, this, type of, this type of consecration and yieldingness to God to your relationships in the church, we won't have Pentecost. There'll still be only a few, one or two mighty men and mighty women raised up in a generation. Only a few. There'll just only be a remnant scattered throughout the land. Some in every church. That's why camp meetings were always great. It called the sum together and made the whole. Camp meetings were great. I mean, that was probably some of the highlights of my life growing up, the camp meetings. 
Who's going to come to camp meeting when it's vacation time? It's your only week of vacation, right? What are you going to do with it? Spend it on the Lord? Or go to Disneyland? What well, sounds better? Ooh, but if it's really heaven? Huh? It's like a dear friend of mine's grandson was sitting in a meeting one night. He was preaching. He said, Papa, this is better than Nemo on ice. <laughs> He was, you know, five years old. Caden, this is better than Nemo on ice. That was the highlight of everything you could think of of excitement. It's true. People, we're going to labor for something. There's a reward. There's a riches. There's a ground, realm. There's a glory that we've not laid hold on. And, and let me just stir you up to say, no, you, like never before, you, each one of you, each one of you, are going to grab, lay hold on it. You're going to get to run a race to lay hold on a realm. And I'm going to promise you, it's going to cost you. You don't have to step down from your glory. You don't have to step. You don't have to step down from your glory. Move out your castle. Leave your holies of holies. In contrast and comparison, I mean, come on, people. What kind of castle do we got? What kind of glory do we have? What kind of? Come on. The Lord's asking. He says it in so many different ways. He asks it over and over again. Hallelujah. Because that, that place, that's going to result, that heart, that consecration, that commitment, that discipline is going to result, huh, in one mind, in one mouth, in one heart. It's going to result in this lowliness called brokenness. Come learn to me. I'm meek and lowly. He says, come learn to me. Here's where the rest is. Here's where the glory's at. Here's what heaven's like. That's what heaven's like. So I said, you mean there's not going to be any Greek games in heaven? No. No Greek games in heaven. There's going to be something far better than the Greek games that you're so addicted to. Something far better. Something better. Something far, 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 far better. Everybody stand with me. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? I want to tell you something. People, listen to me. There's people who've not felt loved that are here and that haven't felt loved on, on they're listening to me on the internet right now. You know why? You cannot feel love. It's because you have offense in your heart. So you can have everybody loving you with the same love of Jesus. Listen to me. Listen to me. And you wouldn't call it love and you wouldn't feel love. Because you're in a prison. You're in a shell. So everybody that comes up to hug you and love on you, all they're doing is hugging a shell. This is true. People who are in Christ Jesus, you didn't know that anybody didn't love you. And, it, and if you did notice, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have any bearing on you. Hey, boys, it's not offering time yet. They decide the platform is a place to play dinosaurs. <laughs> what do you think about them dinosaurs anyways? <laughs> Wooly mammoths. I think it's amazing. I think everything God ever did is amazing. Hallelujah. So today, in Jesus' name, Father has given you the power to repent and get right. He's given you the privilege of having been released of all your debt and empowered you to be able to release everybody else's debt. Because that's the only way that he can get across to you the kind of love, the kind of grace that you and I are supposed to operate in. You know, the man who has received forgiveness of $10 million, he should have been able to operate in that forgiveness. He should have been able to go to his friend and say, listen, I'm going to tell you right now what just happened to me. My master just forgave me of a great debt, $10 million. I just want to, I'm, I'm just so blessed. I just want you to know I'm forgiving you of your 10000 man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go find at, at least another thou, at least another hundred, what? At least another hundred, right? Yeah, at least another hundred folks to forgive just to be even with what he's done for me. 
and nobody owes you that much money. If you forgave and went and laid down your life for everybody on this planet and you were crucified for them having done nothing wrong, you bore their sin, took their guilty place, you, st you and I still couldn't make up for what he did for us. The immensity of that, are you with me? I hope you can get that. And then I hope and pray in Jesus' name, you'll begin to, to be willing to give yourself over to that kind of discipline, that kind of commitment. Now, I'm going to forgive you. Father, fill, fill me with love right now to forgive because he's always supplying it. He'll supply it like a river. What do we come and drink of? When we thirsty, what, do we, what am I thirsty for? I'm thirsty. I'm right now having a problem dealing with this dislike, hate. I'm having a problem dealing with this unforgiveness. I'm thirsty for what? Forgiveness, for love, for mercy, for meekness. God says, come drink, and I'll, let her, I'll, I'll produce a river on the inside of you of it. A river? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. People, I'm going to just tell you something. I think this church is the most radical church on the planet. Believe you me. Listen to me. I've been to those other churches, you longing, looking and casting eye, casting a longing eye towards thinking there's greener pastures. I promise you it's not. Once again, I think this, I, this is the best church. I mean, I, I know, I'm not saying that in a self-serving way. I'm just saying, praise God for the people that God has assembled in this place. All I'm saying is, compared to what Father wants for us and has for us, compared to what Father wants for my own personal life and has for my own personal life, I don't measure that based upon somebody of history in the church. I'm looking at Jesus. And I'm like, I'm hungry for that. In other words, when I say that, I'm going, well, then what do I got to do to get right? John, lift your hands towards heaven right now. Lift your hands towards heaven right now. Father, touch him in Jesus' name. Touch him. Oh, Lord, take that whatever it is away and fill him with what he really needs today. In Jesus' name. Surebekasta. Mm. Jesus. Makes it all better. Makes it all better. The Lord wants to make it all better. Yeah. Once again, when I look at the church that is supposed to be the fullness of God, I'm not going to lower the standard. I'm going to say, Lord, what do we got to do? I'm going to be on my face crying out to God, Father, what do we got to do? I'm not going to just be praying. I'm going to be moving in it. I'm going to yes. be pressing it. Amen. Because if I didn't move in and press in it, it would all be a bunch of lies I'm talking to Papa. Lord, I want to be a part of the glory of church. What does it look like? What, what, I mean, what does it look like in terms of what we got to do what, in, in terms of change and, and obedience? So I'm going to preach that. And when, I promise you when the place is filled with a bunch of people that know, doesn't know the Lord in the different places that we go to, it's just going to be all about salvation. God the Holy Ghost knows what needs to be ministered, how it needs to be ministered. But the Lord has spoken to me over, over it again. I was sitting with revivalists one time, and they, were, and they were talking about revival. I said, listen, people, I want you to consider something. These are all ministers of the gospel, seasoned ministers of the gospel. I want you to consider something. I was speaking by the Spirit of the Lord. I want you to consider something, that God would withhold the harvest until our churches get right. So why should he bring in a harvest into a silo that's mildewed? into a church that is, not, that is going to teach them to be something different than what the Holy Ghost has instructed us to be, what he's paid the price for us to have and be. So, you know, the, the reality of it, this is true. I mean, I spoke. God used me to speak, but I was on, in the audience too. I was just that much more stirred. Everybody, every preacher, every seasoned preacher in that place was stirred. They were going, yes, they were, I hear it. I mean, they, were, they were groaning in the thing. You look, people, I understand that you've got to grow spiritually to be able to receive deeper spiritual things. I understand that. Paul said, look, you should be able to receive much deeper spiritual things than you all have right now. But you can't discern them. You, you're not there yet. You still function in the realm of babes. I've got to just feed you. I've got to talk to you on a level of babes. I've got to minister to you out of the realm of milk because that's the allegory he was using. But there's no sense that we, there's no reason we can't just go ahead and mature and grow rapidly be divested of the interest around us and all the voices that we've listened to and all the characters that we've fashioned our life after. And so, Mom, this is one big altar call. Everywhere you're standing right now is an altar. I just want you to know, everywhere you're standing is an altar. 
listen, I'm going to tell you what I believe for tonight. I believe that the fire of God, Pentecost will come. I believe, listen, I, here's what I'm in expectation of. That the fire of God come rest upon everyone's head. Amen. I know something. I know that no man can do anything unless God gives you the power to do it. I know that no man can have anything unless he received from heaven. I know that no man can minister out of anything other than the faith and the grace that God has given. So you say, ah, ah, ha, ha. Then it's contingent all upon God. And I'm not guilty. No, 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 no. It's what only he can give and impart, but he's only going to give and impart to those who will obey him and respond to the word. I'm going to come with an expectation to see something happen. Listen, this elementary school and the people that touch this ground, when we done, even if we were on here today, it's going to be different. Mind-binding spirits will no longer have a hold upon the children that walk upon this earth, upon this ground. Upon this, this carpet is very similar to the carpet that we had in the, in the 10180 church. Hallelujah. Right over here on Majestic Avenue. Two things I'm going to do everything in my power in Christ Jesus to do. One, get everybody that's standing in this place and everybody's listening to me into heaven. Through prayer, through intercession, through preaching, through perseverance, long-suffering, whatever it takes. Two, to see you participate with the glorious church. And when you old, you they can't hardly move because you're 103. And you know, the great-great-great-grandchildren come around saying, Papa, tell us what it was like when glory filled the land. Tell us what it was like when people were being raised from the dead, the blind were seeing, deaf were hearing, hospitals were being cleared out. You think that, oh yeah, back 200 years ago, 150 years ago, oh, they were cleaning out the hospitals, there was, then the prisons were empty. Well, then why can't it be now? Why is it we just get all rejoicing, glory in what happened 150 years ago? No, why can't I be a champion of it now? Why can't you say that? That's what I'm saying. You be a champion of it now. No, this is the way it's going to happen because God's not going to do anything outside of faith. Did you listen to the meeting on Wednesday night? Yeah. God will not move outside of the realms of faith yeah. through our life. He will move absent of us, but through our lives, He will not move absence of faith in our life. If you believe, I believe God's going to do this. Then if I really believe it, then I'm going to give myself completely to it. And I'm not going to tell the potter how to, oh, Lord, I, I, want, I want a little lip on the end of my cup over here because I ain't tell nothing. Say, fashion me for me. Just use me. Don't refuse me. Oh, God, choose me. We're getting ready to make some major advancements and breakthroughs in horticulture this year because I'm pushing it to tissue culture. But everybody has to learn growing plants properly and effectively through seed first before you do it through a cell. It's the way it is in the natural. It's the way it is in the spiritual. I can't get people to do stuff in the natural. How is it ever going to do it in the spiritual? You understand? And that was a huge breakthrough tissue culture. It was a huge breakthrough. I started getting in. I started really getting captivated by tissue culture back in 1987, 88. And it's just amazing where it's gone, especially in plant tissue culture. And what we could do in food supplies. And, I, and, and, and this, is where the, this, is where, this is where the anointing in the kingdom outruns the offering basket. Ooh. This is where governments are saying, please come and help us with that. Can you, can you come in? Azerbaijan, please, could you come and help us with that? Oh, yeah, we'll help you. Come in. A Joseph to the nations. A Daniel to the nations. Huh? And more, because we stand in the stead of Christ Jesus. We come with the power of the Holy Ghost for a nation. And everybody eats our food. Huh? Are you ingesting something touched by the power of God? That's got to be more effective than aprons and handkerchiefs. I'm getting ready to go to Nepal. They're calling me to come to Nepal. I'm coming. I'm going to Nepal. The anti-conversion law is throwing everybody in jail right now. Just watch what God will do. So I said, are you concerned? Are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? 
There's no way. I'm living in another realm to be concerned about the things that you're concerned about. I'm not even concerned. Furthermore, I don't believe I'm redundant. I wish I were. I wish that everybody I knew was as passionate about nations as I am. Passionate about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ as I am. There's two things I'm extremely passionate about. And the first in this order, the church of Jesus. Because I want it to live and to be seen. I want it to be what God described it to be in his word. Not religious. Second is nations. God put it in me. And I discovered in the word that is right. It is the right word. So let that faith. I praise God for everyone. Don't you let, don't you listen. Don't you let anybody, anything make you less than what God has made you to be. As we sing the song today. We're fully empowered to be what he's described. And I praise God that you're sitting in these chairs. Because it's the beginnings. It's the beginnings. That you're standing here with us. That there are some of you who are able to go out into the door to door this next week knocking on doors seeing somebody needs a miracle thank you so much on behalf of the kingdom of God on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you so much and then the last two weeks of this month we're just going to hit it as hard as we possibly can and we'll leave all the results to the Lord because it we might be still in the plowing stage right now I don't believe we are we're in the sowing of the seed stage. I remember sitting, listen, I want to say this over and over again. I remember sitting in the prayer room in Claremont Mesa, the Church of the Nazarene that we were renting at that time. And over and again, the Lord would show me in the spirit, the fire of his presence burning on every house. Burning on every house. So radical. So intense. The fire is present, burning on every house. Both small and great, small, I mean, you know, poor and rich. And it wasn't long, and, and what happened was it was the, what I believed from the very beginning was the first tokens of what God was going to do. I never said it was a full blown description of what God was going to do. Some preachers accused me of it. I said, no, 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 I never said that. I just said, this is an assembly. God is calling an assembly. And it's like, they knew it because you can't get preachers to cooperate with anything unless it's mandate from heaven, by and large. I said over and again, it's the first fruits. It's the beginning of what God's going to do. Papa's going to do it. As long as there are people that are going to be a passionate and say, okay, we the army of God, we're going to move through this land. We're going to move through this region, to this area. And we're going to watch what, and we're going to continue no matter what it looks like, we're going to continue to press it. Continue to press it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Robo Kutishita. Vibrosha Bokutishita. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, people, we want you to we want you to get intense with us, passionate with us that over the next 50 days, we'll be 50 to 55 days, we'll be able to close escrow. We want you to get passionate with us. I mean, I'm passionate in prayer, intense about it. Get intense about it with me. Next 60 days, 50, 50 to 55 days. We're going to see it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was sitting around, just to pray and you know, there was like 1,000. Then here's 5,000. Then 10,000. Then 90,000. That's a win. I didn't say W-I-N. I said W-I-N-D. That's a win. Huh? And then it was like we, after we, we hit the first phase of 200,000. And then I, it's, and I got another email. Another 10,000 has come in. It's like, thank you, Father, for the encouragement. Thank you for the miracle. It's just a miracle. It's a miracle that you allowed God to, to work through your life and your response to him. It's just a wind. It's the wind. Praise God.
Thank you. Thank you. Well, worship the Lord in tithes and offerings. Bless him. Bless each other. Listen, make sure everything's done in holiness around here. Okay? Holy, holy hugs. Later on, we'll advance to holy kisses. If anybody needs prayer for anything, you're sick, you're diseased, you're hurting, you're perplexed, you're overwhelmed, whatever, you come, we'll pray with you and for you. God, touch you by His power. Amen. Right now, in the name of Jesus, those that are watching on the web, you sick, you disease, you're hurting, you famished, you overwhelmed, you don't have enough money to pay the bills, you don't know what you're going to do. Now in Jesus' name, I speak healing and life to you. Right now in Jesus' name. Somebody needs to get their kids. Right now in the name of Jesus, I speak healing and life to you. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Robata Serebekeshti. Name Roda Bashile. Quit focusing on the problem and the issue at hand. Turn your heart towards Jesus. Begin to worship him and praise him. Let him work a miracle for you. Hook up with the kingdom, then the faith, faith will work. Hook up with the kingdom, then the miracle works. Hook up with touching Jesus, then the miracle works. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, right now, fire God presence of Jesus right now. How about us? Mama in the city, no gara. Membro serene in the Membro stay. So profana in the city. Money on Jesus. Money on Jesus. Here is the ha ha. I commission you and command you in the name of Jesus. Be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah. The fire of the Mamma my name. Proserete. Porus the wrist. Now in Jesus' name. And now in Jesus' name. Out of the belly flows rivers of living water. Rivers of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. A separate. Mendele is the king of Montesta. Is the re. Is the restore me. Is the king of Montesta. Serapa, there is the Fire of the Holy Ghost, my rest. Bande sto rabati, bande sto rabati, bande sto rabati. Great faith in Jesus. Great boldness in the faith in Jesus. Manomaneste king. Membruba fatili costa bravia pataya. Levestu sanana kitaya. Lesta. Lesta. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Billy Costa. List of Rinostan. Signs and wonders and miracles. 
Thank you, Father, for raising up strong men of the faith, supernatural witnesses, oh God. Hallelujah. Preachers full of faith and grace. From the crown of your head, so your feet. Father, we put the blood of Jesus Christ on this whole place. Sickness and disease, pain and affliction. We command you, go in Jesus' name. Loose the property of God. Hallelujah. Jesus, bless my baby. Blessed. No sickness in the house. Sickness got to go out. No diseases. None in Jesus' name. Thank you for the authority and the anointing. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for the great work of faith in Julie's life and the children and Samuel. Father, may Samuel even hear your voice. Lord, like Samuel of old. I'm from Dereste. Ningleste. 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 Signs and wonders and miracles. Ah, the goodness of the Lord. The glory of the Lord of hosts. Flowing out like rivers for the fire of the Holy Ghost. His signs and wonders. Manan in angel and among germa city. Monaman engaged to keep the state to the survival. Strength to run the race. Oh, the state. Oh, God, teach my hands to war. I'm on my mind today that a bow of steel is broken with my arm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you give us the ability to spoil the house. To put to flight the armies of darkness. They do not have any repercussions. Thank you, Father, for the valiant. Thank you, Father, for the men and the women full of faith. Full of faith. Full of faith. Fill the faith. Come, but I'll sit at him. Boys. Come here. Come here. Sit down on is she from among us? Is she from among us? Who 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 is she from among us? Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord. He said, I'm a man who's not a nailing a mindless. For a baby, I'm a man who's not a meaning a lamos. Oh, this great outpouring of this love of God, the Spirit of the Lord, and the working of His faith and power. Oh, let your glorious love and light now shine. Oh, God, 
Let everything that you've ordained be manifested through our lives. We pray in Jesus' name.